with only 15% of their reserves. You have to submit your country's financial report, and if approved, you get to access up to 20% of your deposits from the previous year as a loan at commercial interest rates. I'm going to repeat that. Should you want to access some of your own money, you have to submit your own country's financial report. And if approved, you get it as a loan at commercial interest rate. So you go from having a humongous credit with France to now owing France for borrowing your own money. A loan that you'll never be able to finish paying. They also said, all your minerals discovered and yet to be discovered, French companies have the first right of refusal. You go to those countries today, all major contracts, the French companies have the first right of refusal. The water supply, the power supply, the mining fixtures, the oil rigs, roads construction, airports, French companies have the first right of refusal. If anything is left, the people in your country may get it. They also said, your military can only be trained by France. You can only purchase just military equipment from France. France shall have military presence in your country and can invade your country without notice if France feels that her interests in your country are being violated. In the past many years, yeah. we've had 67 coups in Africa out of 26 countries. Of the 26 countries, the coups, 16 coups, were 16 countries were former French colonies. To date, 22 African leaders were assassinated during a coup, documented all of them, France was behind it, simply because France, France felt they were quote unquote threatening French interests. Countries are still depositing their funds to France, do's and don'ts as stipulated by the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization. You have given up your financial resources. You have given up control of your natural resources. You have given up your military. What power do you have? Today, because of the Pact for the Continuation of Colonization, France alone, that little bitty country, is taking out of Africa over $500 billion. Over $500 billion. And by the time they finish investing that money into the French stock market, they are realizing trillions of dollars in any given year. Pack that. The watchdogs for corruption are saying out of Africa, 50 billion gets out of the continent from corruption. The question I have is, why has it been so difficult for us as Africans to say enough is enough? How long are we going to keep watching this carnage go on and we say nothing? It goes back to the mind. It goes back to that fear. It goes back to that sense of inferiority. And I go back to the diagnosis I made when I went to Washington. That until we black people understand that we are suffering from the legacy of colonization, that we are suffering from the legacy of slavery, that while we may have lost the shackles of the of the, in our legs and our hands, the shackles of the mind continue. Until we realize that we are a wounded people and we need healing, nothing about our circumstances is going to change. We are sick people. But to, to, re to be sick, first you must realize and accept that you're sick. How do you go to the doctor if you don't think you're sick? 
we're not only in the doctor's waiting room on our patient basis, we're not even in the hospital in a general ward. As black people, we are in the intensive care. And we need to realize that. The baby is now born. And her name is the African continent of free trade area. You see, the children of Africa must realize that now we need diapers, we need formula, they're going to be sleepless nights, this baby's going to cry, this baby's going to throw tantrums. We need to be ready to take care of this baby. Africa is on the move. The question is, are the children of Africa ready to step up and take what is rightfully yours? You got to understand around the globe, as black people, the reason we are so disrespected is because we're poor. Most of us don't own anything. Singularly, while we were given our independence, the one thing that was denied from us is economic liberation. The African heads of states are saying, Africa wealth, African wealth belongs to the African children. The African Union defines African diaspora as all people of African descent living outside Africa. The colonizers have been building the Africa that they want. The game is up. You see, you don't go to China and find black people driving the Chinese development agenda. You don't go to Europe. You don't go to Mexico, India and find black people driving their, those regions development agenda. The reality is you must not, cannot, should not, and golly will not go to Africa and find non-Africans driving the African continental development agenda. Unless, of course, you the children of Africa, the inheritors of Africa's wealth, yes. choose to vacate that place that has your name. Yes. The choice is yours. The environment is ready. Yes. And so, I'm on a mission to see to it that we, people of African descent, truly understand our Africa truly realize that we have been lied to, but that we are smart enough to know better. That we have been sleeping, that it's time to wake up. You see, a united African diaspora is a sleeping giant. It is the sleeping giant that is needed to bring the sustainable change that Africa desires. Bigger corruption in Africa is coming from outside. Try flying low over the DRC. You're going to see tarmacs in the middle of the jungle. You're going to see 747s flying into the DRC, picking up minerals and flying right outside the country. Do you think those multinationals are going to want to see peace in the DRC? Do you think they're going to want to see peace in South Sudan? No. A stable Africa is an Africa that cannot be exploited. So they will see to it that there will never be, be peace in Africa by any means necessary unless you come to the table and do something about it. For a continent that doesn't have a single gun manufacturing company, we seem to have endless supply of guns. How? How is this okay that Africa continues to be exploited? How is it okay that the world has watched as France is taking cold, hard cash out of Africa? How is this okay? I want to know. United Nations answer that. Secretary General Guterres answer that. When you all meet every year in New York, what are you talking about? That is our reality. No more shall we continue to be ignorant. Our eyes are open. We know our Africa. We are going to reconnect with our roots. African Americans, you must understand there is a void that is deep in each and everyone's subconscious. It is a void that affects everything you do. 
first you must understand you have that void. In this country, with the exception of the American Indians, everybody is a foreigner. And everybody has their roots outside the United States. And the rest of the races are connected to their roots, with the exception of the African Americans. You're too busy running away from your roots. You're bu busy denying who you are. Well, guess what? It is what it is. You are an African. And Africa is home. And the sooner you wake up and realize and accept that Africa is home, the sooner you are going to fill that void. For as long as that voice is in you, you're always going to be like a ship without an anchor. The wind blows this way, here you go. The wind blows the other way, here we go. Find your base. Go home. Africa is where you belong. And Africa is where your roots are. Thank you. Definitely. Unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides. And when you fight and say, no, we are not going to do this, they use the system to stop you. It's either they set you up with the opposition and they'll be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people. They will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable. And of course, any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. If it's not the Chinese, it's the American, it's the British. Our electricity, Bumuda, is run by the British. And we still don't have light. We're looking for light. Electricity. If you don't have electricity, how can you talk about education? How can you talk about health facility? How can you talk about improving the infrastructure of your country? We don't have electricity. Now, do we actually even have proper water? Pipe-borne water? So that our kids will not be sick. We don't have those facilities. Why? With all the minerals we have, there is a cap you put. Before my husband became the president of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was benefiting, they said, uh, what's the word, 0.000.1%. What is that? Basically, a company can take as much as $100 million out of the country in terms of minerals, and then they can just give the country $10,000. Now, what will $10,000 do for our health system? What is $10,000 do for our educational system? And these are the things I believe that are stopping Africa from progressing. We don't have a say. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we celebrate independence, because we are not free. Unfortunately, we are... The United States absolutely does not want these African countries, Ghana, Gabon, uh, Senegal, the Ivory Coast, to turn into the next Norway because of their own oil-rich resources. We can become one of the wealthiest and most prosperous countries in the world when oil, that's exactly what happened in Norway in 1969 when they discovered oil, went from being basically an irrelevant country, you know, poor by all, you know, by, by today's standards, becoming one of the wealthiest and most prosperous and uh, highest life and expectancy, free health care. People don't leave the country. They don't travel. They, they stay there after they graduate college in Oslo. It's like, imagine that happening to Africa. The United States absolutely cannot allow that to happen, cannot allow Africa to become prosperous. They'll do whatever they can to keep that from happening. The leadership is determined to do anything that we do with strategically how we have been 
to our side, conduct our plans, which we are not making it anybody for that. You see the people pushing to court. Court. Ask what plan you are doing now. Come back to me, Anna. Ronaldo is going to prison with the rubbish, this, with the rubbish and the corner of that place. These people are planning, Chapel. And now we are talking in. My friend, like I do, let me tell you people something that happened. You see the signal. The day before, the morning of the court, the morning of this court, on 15 December, we are asking what are we expecting in the court on 15 December. We were told that they said that we have tried our best. If we don't do anything, they said it is the wish of God. I am saying it to Radio Biafra because we all get people we want to divert attention. I am shouting it now. We stop all this rubbish talk, talk, let's do this thing. Very strategic. You got the problem. Don't allow me. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. A great dear friends and lovers of freedom. This is Radio Biafra House Service coming to you through the auspices of Radio Biafra London. My name is Mens Mars, Jonathan Chinedu from Alo Province of Biafra London. We are here live and direct. Today is the 13th day of the fourth month, being April 2024. I welcome each and every one of you to welcome your friends and well wishers onto this Hello platform because today is going to be special. The title is The Brutal Exposure. Therefore, as you are coming, I know even in Asorok, they are quietly listening. The DSS, they are listening. Therefore, I want each and every one of you to come with your pen and papers. Bring your big, big, big and papers in order to write down the information that you are going to receive today. And also today, there is not going to be any opening lines. Please. It is the brutal exposure. As you may know, today we are here with our General Officer Commanding Maazi Chena Samworu, who is going to be, you know, tell us what we need to know today. Therefore, without taking any much time, I am going to hand over the microphone to Maazi Chena Samworu. Maazi, please, you are on a as Christ, I mean, as clear as crystal. Please start by giving us your introductory statements and go on as you may. Thank you. I hope I'm coming out very clear. You are coming coming out crystal clear. Go on. Thank you. Thank you, Marzi. Um, dear friends and all the lovers of freedom, my name is Mazi Chinasa Woru. Mazi Chinasa Woru served the indigenous people of Biafra as a member of the Directorate of State. I come from Obingwa. Obingwa is in Aba province. This evening, I have come to you all to continue educating our people on the journey we all found ourselves in. Today, the reason why this particular program is titled The Brutal Exposure is because there are many questions our people are asking the leadership of this movement. There are questions the media are asking the leadership of this movement while we try our best to protect this struggle but we have found ourselves to be that the duties we are carrying out today has become an obligation because there are certain things we do not love it we do not like it 
the blackmail, the criticism, we are not being paid. Nobody offers us any financial um, uh, enticement that makes us to continue to be in this struggle till death. We are here today, continue to champion this struggle because we have found out that the burden lies on our shoulder. It has become an obligation that we must fulfill. Just like many of us and every other person listening, there are times you wake up some days, you don't even want to go to work. You are tired, you want to quit. But when you look back, you say, I have to go to work because I have bills to pay. I have things to put right. That is why we find ourselves, not that we have bills to pay, but we have the burden. We have the obligation from our people. We find ourselves. Mazin Mondekano is the leader of this movement. And I can tell everybody this evening that this leadership, I can talk about myself and many other people, I joined the struggle as far as 2013. And if you calculate it since today, it is nearly 11 years. We have been loyal to a fault. We have been loyal to the point that we are loyal to the different struggle. And that does not make us to be stupid. We are loyal because we know that our people need freedom. But that our loyalty and that our effort, our money, our time, our life, we jeopardize our families, jeopardize our businesses, we jeopardize everything we have in order to restore the Africa, to fight for the freedom of our people. But sometimes, or I will say, in these past three years, we have seen something unimaginable. Things we do not expect that will ever happen. But we are here today to make sure we continue to take our people and drive this struggle to a logical conclusion, which is the restoration of life. We have, we sometimes we don't count wasted years, but there have been some wasted years. Wasted years in the sense that the time we're supposed to champion the Biafra struggle forward, some people want us to be running around the circle. Some people want to play with the intelligence of over 70 million people with lies, manipulation, and deceit. And today, I want to let their friends know certain things. That it is time we know what we are pursuing without no emotions. Because emotions will take us nowhere. Do not think it is difficult for us to get a free Biafra. The world knows. They know we deserve freedom. But this freedom In as much as we must defend ourselves, but don't forget it's also a political solution. It is a political matter. Because no matter what we do, we will still come to the table to discuss the freedom of the Africans. Whether we like it or not, it will not be done on the sky. It will not be done in the sky. It will not be done, you know, in a, it is not a fiction. It's something people will come together and sit. And that is what the enemies do not want it to happen. That is why the moment Mazen Nandekan was kidnapped in Kenya, the government set in with their missionaries. 
The reason of keeping Mazen Nam the Carlos is dead. It's not that if the Nigerian government wants to kill Mazen Nam the Kano in Kenya, anywhere that they won't kill him. If the Nigerian government could be able to adopt Mazen Nam the Kano and hold him for complete eight days before bringing him to court, I want everybody to put this in his mind. They were also having the power to eliminate him. They have the power, even for three years in their custody. I'm telling people some things. If the Nigerian government wants to eliminate Mazen Nam the Kano inside the custody, they will do it. We can only fight for one month, two months, three months. People will get tired. People will be killed. People will continue their life. It's a reality every one of us must put in their mind. That is why I say, on most times I make the post, I say, what you can get through deception, there is no need to use force. What you can use your brain to manage. The moment Mazen Nandekano was renditioned, we called for a seat at home. Many of you know why we called for this seat at home. Because the Nigerian government refused to bring Mazen Nandekano to court. There were information that he was seriously sick from the Omar Dakar in the USA when they were carrying the news that Mazen Nandekano had only two weeks to live in the DSS custody. The leadership of IPOD moved into a very swift action that many people out of emotion, deceptive move, and this evening I will tell you what the leadership of IPOD have survived and we will continue to survive the enemies. It is not by our making, because if the hand of Chuko Kitadiam is in this struggle, nobody can destroy this struggle. Whether I am in, whether you are in, whether Mazen Nam the Kano is there or not, the Biafra restoration is destined to come to pass. Everybody must have this in his mind. Why all of us are out here, people are on radio, speaking on a daily basis, is because for the restoration of Biafra, and nothing more, for the freedom of our people, and nothing more. And to that, everybody should understand that the moment the rendition was in the canal, that was when the game started. But even the term was in the canal in Kenya, Automatically, Nigeria will make Mazen Nandekano a martyr. And there is no country that wants people, a leader of such movement, to be made a martyr. They don't want it. The British, you people should know that the British have colonized many countries before now. They have a bitter experience on how people react, how people move, or how they take people, their heroes, and they do not want Mazen Nandekano. If not, they would have killed Mazen Nam the Kano in the airport. They would have, as they adopted him for eight days, his younger brother, the one in Germany they call Kalanta, he was in communication with those who were holding Mazen Nam the Kano. He was speaking to one of the ladies holding Mazen Nam the Kano. The lady was controlling him. They were talking. So completely, they brought Mazen Nam the Kano back in Nigeria. The younger brother was communicating. But everybody was kept in the dark. And the moment Mazen Nam the Kano was brought to Nigeria, they, we, we were defending them. We were defending them until heaven, they just burst out from somewhere and turned the table that it was the DOS that sold Mazen Nam the Kano. The brother came out in so many official programs, turn around, reasons are. Reasons that everybody should know so that we know where our problems are. Because Kalanta have insisted me, whether it is a record he have with Mazen Nandekano, he want to be the deputy leader. He want to be the next person in line after Mazen Nandekano. He tried all his efforts for Mazen Nandekano to make him after him, it is after Mazen Nandekano, it is him. 
A lot of you can saw, you can see the role he has been playing since Mazen Nandekano was religious. The government and the politicians in Nigeria, most of the evil politicians, they understood this grief and envy and jealousy of this young man. So he, he became a tool. He and his younger brother at home, they become a tool of destabilization. They become a tool in the hands of the politicians. Now, when Martin and the Khan was religious, there were three fronts brought out to destroy the DOS. There were three fronts. They were systematically marshaled out. Most of you can hear Dave Omar when he comes on a, a national television and said that that he will create IPO, another IPO, the inside IPO. The statements are there. I am not the one who made Who were they using? They were using the family of Mazen and the Kano. From day one, and I want every dear friend here, when you have any communication with Kalonta and his siblings, Ask them this simple question. What did Chida Sawori, Chike Bezian, and other members of the DOS did to Mokeko? He said, very simple. Just tell them, leave black men. That Chida Sawori, they showed Mazen and they can leave these black men. Ask them this simple question. Anytime you have opportunity, even those around them, ask them this simple question. What did Chida Sawori, and another member, I'm talking names, I'm calling them so that I don't generalize it because all of you know who their targets are. The, the family, the siblings of Mazen and the Pano was out against the DOS. I'm going to elaborate this thing so that many of you will understand what the leadership has been fighting personally. And otherwise, to make sure we keep this struggle moving. Because as I do deal with, we gave him to their pressure, but now most of you would have been there in Jafra life. Because the Nigerian government will teach you people, they will turn the propaganda like they are trying to turn in many places. IPOD is bad. You people have seen the little the military is doing. It, it is bigger than that, what they want. They will hold every one of you. In the villages, anybody who have answered to the IPO, they will haunt you the moment the this structure is collapsed. IPO media has stood very firm. Most of you do not know that IPO media and this was by few people. There was no money coming from the cost of IPO to sponsor the IPO media. Because had people who are voting for some in IPO media, IPO will not be alive today. IPO Marze, Marze, please, Marze, please check your or whether you can move around your voice is season we need to get every word you are speaking i don't know whether it's Those. connectivity <laughs> Marcy, can, you Marcy, can you hear me now yes yes i think it's better now please repeat in just 30 it's, seconds or 20 seconds Marcy, is it, it is it okay now it's better it's good it's good it's better now it's clear Okay, I, I I managed to remove the Bluetooth. Okay, that please, it. that is it. Yes. Please go on, go on. Okay. People should know, had it been the IPOB leadership were waiting for money from IPOB posts, the IPOB media will never flourish. All the people in IPOB media are dedicated, volunteered, people who spend money from their pocket to make sure they are online. The campaign started. Another group that was packaged is the women in America, the Omar Dakar Highway in America. All of you saw what they did. And another group of people are the Perimans, the autopilots, which is another say These are three fronts that was massed out 
to destroy the IPOB structure. They fought the IPOB structure from all corners with black men. If all of you found out, three, all of them were working together before. The siblings of Mazin Namdekan was so much in love with the women in America. They are taking money, they are collaborating, they are doing everything. They were also working with a very man. They were all working with a very man. They were all working and along the line. You know, they said the enemies will come from one way, but they will all scatter from different ways. The Biafra land, the gods of Biafra land start to put confusion inside them. Their greed and envy start to manifest. Those who will control money. I want everybody to understand if you're an IPOD, imagine that the leadership of IPOB is an IPOB. We don't know where IPOB money is. We don't know how much IPOB has because sometimes you want to talk about it. They blackmail you. Oh, they have come for money. Their eyes for money. You are being blackmailed. Nobody in the leadership of IPOB knows what IPOB has. It is only left for Kalonta, Mazen Namdekano, and then Nayanya. They are the people who Maze, the can, I, can I ask something in this thing you said now? Yes. In a, in a, in a global movement like this, do you think that it is okay for, you know, the uh, leadership even before Mazin Amdekano uh, was renditioned for the leadership, the structure, the highest echelon after Mazin Amdekano, not to know anything about uh, finance, because situation like this can happen. Uh, do you think it is uh, something right, please? Because today is a brutal explosion, please. Mazin, um, let me tell you, in this struggle, for me, I bring my money. I put my money. I go for messages. I do travel on behalf of IPOB. Ask them. They never paid me back. There are people who have traveled, go assignment for IPOB. They never pay. Nobody ever did. Nobody will. But it is not right, Mazi. In the real sense, it is not right. And most of you can find out the attitude. The siblings of Mazen Namdekano have met out to Chike Dozium during these three years. Mazen Namdekano was not. Let me give you an example. During, as Mazen Namdekano was inside, a social can say, go and make fundraising. Then Mazen Chike Dozium, they will put his name on flyers. Mazen Chike Dozium will go out in the, to do the fundraising. He will speak to our people encourage them to raise money do you understand me to raise money for the struggle after raising money as a head of directorate who have the authority because he's a gentleman and gentleman to the the, the gentleman was so too much he will ask them for example he met he, he partake in a in a, in a fundraising in america where the head of finance is there after the fundraising maybe he may he may speak to them for some couple of minutes 45 minutes encourage them and after he left expecting that at the end of the fundraising at least he will be informed that in this fundraising ten thousand dollar was raised but any moment i am telling you chick edosium ask them how much did we raise in this particular fundraising Boom. You people see it in social media. They come. He's looking for money. He was asked. You people saw Kalonta will come out and they abuse him. They are looking for money. They told them not to come near the money. They will start blackmailing. Blackmailing Chike Dozium as save what he asked. He didn't ask them give me the money. He said, but let me put in my record. On so so date, we made a fundraising. And they continue to blackmail this man. On a daily basis, they will put all kinds of accusation. They want to know money. They want to all these things. The man will quietly back off because he don't want he don't want unnecessary saga. Why I'm saying this is for all their friends to listen because this is what is happening. 
And all these things are orchestrated plans to frustrate the leadership of IPO. At a point, this leadership, at a point that was in 2022, we said, how can we be? This media is being sponsored. How can we ask the finance? Can you please be given certain a very small amount of money for the media for it for to put their, their normal monthly subscriptions, those in Biafra land? The money was given a peanut because for us, everybody in diaspora, nobody pay, nobody gives you data. We have free data. We have free data. Why, why I say free data is what what the way we use data in diaspora it's almost like free for me me in particular i have over 1000 what do they call it kmp i can i can put a, a youtube from first to the end of the month it can never finish it's only limitless so i consider that as a so at the end of the day these three groups were fighting day and night they even went to oracles they went to juju places to kill cow kill chicken kill, get some they, some were so bold enough to come out on social media to to show the people that they want tina sawaru dead chicken those them dead and some of them who did that and some of them are dead already they died already the one they call okay is it in Abadak was in the synagogue. The, the synagogue, everywhere they did everything, they were destroyed by the Nigerian government also. The man was doing medicine for kidnappers and criminals. Where is this mad woman in America? They call Nelly. She go mad. All those things was things they were doing to destroy IPOB. She, these are all the, the juju they were doing to destroy the IPOB. Her nakedness come to, for you people to see the length they could go to destroy the leadership of IPOB. And I will not exempt the in law to Mazen Namdekano, the father of Mazen Namdekano's wife. He is part of this conspiracy. He is the one, whatever they plan, he comes out and says to some coordinators, give them up that, hey, Mazenam the Kano, he don't work with this DOS again. He was the one engineering some talk on the background. When they took him and went for one oracle, and he swear with them, with the family, siblings of Mazenam the Kano, they give him some things to drink. After that, he become a conspirator to destroy ITO, to destroy Chita Samoru and Chike Dozim. That man. And after he have done the job for them, now he's down. May Chuko Kikadia might help him. What did we do to these people? That we want to protect IPO. They seize the funds for IPOB to move forward when they have seen the firm withdraw all their monies they turn around and they say Kike, those do this they stop account ask them the money you people move out from one place to another China Samura, I don't know but they continue why I'm saying this is I want to lay a basic information for you people understand where I am going how they want to destroy the leadership of IPOB because they are working for one group or the other. Sometimes people ask us, hey, you say they are working for the government or this is, you don't know how the government work. Government can use you, destroy people, at the end of the day, they destroy you. Example, look at Tina Samwaneri in Imo State. The Togre, how he has been moving around Killing people in the name of who was on him. Where is he today? The day he will go down, nobody, even the hope, will not come for him. The same way the, the governors use criminals, intimidate people, kill people just for them to get. At the end of the day, they finish. They put you in jail, but they were working for you. But the ones of Mazinam, the kind of sibling, everything they do was deliberate. Kalanta and Nenayanya now from their own armed group called Motherland. 
they use it threatening people i tell people i will kill you you do even to a point a governor called one of the top official of ipod in the media i'm asking this question this thing you people are doing is this the way to get biafra the person said what are we doing he said this thing that mazin namdekano and his siblings the person tried to defend mazin namdekano he told him you know why i'm saying are you people putting face another side he said i am a governor i have every report coming on my table are you people not aware that the siblings of Mazen Namdekano are threatening people with armed men? Their own armed group. The person said, we are not aware. He said, if you people are not aware, that means you people are deceiving yourselves. You cannot tell me you are IPOD. You don't get information. You don't know that the brother of Mazen Namdekano have his own armed men they are using to threaten people in the name of ipod but he called them motherland and the one of the commanders of this is called Ebeneri. they are the one now doing many kidnapping in anambra if you hear Ebeneri, he's the head of that motherland committing or kidnapping they cannot because they want to destroy the leadership. They were looking people they will use to confront ESN, confront IPOB volunteers. They 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 went back trying to destroy IPOB. And Mazi, this, uh, this issue, um, the Nigerian government, they are bagging everything to IPOB. Uh, yes. is how you see how is highly complicated because Mas, we, cannot, is, we cannot deny that very, all. that is why Mas, Go on. They, they, let me tell you the nigerian government they, they they do you see them talking do you see them come on social media talking i used to tell our people the dss forget about anything you're talking the nigerian dss they are professionals i'm telling you you know, anywhere you are, you want to uh, underrate them. Or they are professionals. The Nigerian the secret service, when they meet you, they will give you confidence that everything is fine. You may even see them as your friend. That is how they work. They have every information they need. You know why I'm saying this? I'm coming close to this point for everybody to understand what is making Mazin Nam the Kanu case very complicated. Because the family of Mazin Namdekano and this lawyer they call a lawyer Jimako, they are trying to push out Mazin Namdekano from the agitation to a family something to protect the rubbish they have all committed. That is what they are trying to do. And I'm going to explain it very well. Everybody open your ears so that you understand. It's not just you come out on social media, you start. Ja, 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 ja. Now, along this line, since 2021, 2022, I come on this place, I will shout, I will send message, I will tell them, this rubbish you people are concocting, trying to use it to destroy the DOS. We came out, our hands are clean. The plan. Let me tell you, Kalumba was at home. You pe people ask, there are people at home. They will. This model and people he groomed, there are people he went out with them because he want to claim the second in command of Mazinandika. There are many group of our Biafra youth he went out on escorts. He only will come back. None of the youth come back with him. Nigerian army will pick all of them. Nobody know whether they are alive or they are dead. With an example, ask them about Abambo. Mpurumbo, I mean, ask them about Mpurumbo. Where is Mpurumbo and co? The Nigerian military accosted them. 
They left him because his mother and the kind of brother. But every boy that was with him, they took all of them. He came back home quietly. He didn't say a word. He never talked to the family and tell them where their husband and their children are. Till today, Kalunga. And they continue to do their activities. Have put Mazin Namdekano in a tight situation. But today, because of the security report in the hands of the governors, many people, they are tagging all these things on Mazin Namdekano. They are tagging all these things on Mazin Namdekano. And they allow it become a become an accomplice with them. But let me make it the story very clear now. Do you people know when I was shouting, screaming? Every one of you know when we are shouting here, screaming about, they are listening to everything happening around Mazin and the Kano. We tell them, be careful what you are saying. Stop going there to feed him lies for you people's own greed. And they uh, um, uh, how can I put it? Uh, ambition, because he is in one place. They are the only people coming to him, feeding him with information. Anything they tell him, of course, Mazen Nandekano will also accept and tell them go ahead. Or he will tell them is I don't know what he used to give them as response, but I'm sure the DSSA hear everything. Now, a couple of weeks back, all of us heard a lawyer, Jimako, came out. After how many years, told you people that in the case, they saw, he found out that there is a picture. When he came to see Mazen Namdekano, the DSS took him a picture and they presented this picture as an exhibit against Mazen Namdekano. They said they mistakenly and I am asking dear friends this evening, do you believe that DSS can mistakenly take the picture of a lawyer, Jimako, and put as an exhibit? Anybody agree this rubbish? They just put the picture for him to know so that his mind starts working. It's a psychological attack because it is not only picture. That day he's talking, there was some information he was passing to Mazen Nandekano. We don't know, maybe it is from a periman. Because he's working with a periman. The video evidence is there, it's not only picture. They make the picture, the time, the visit, everything is there. They heard everything he said. And the lawyer Jimako, we use these things to bargain for his own freedom. A lawyer Jimako is under the case of Mazen Namdekano for his own. Do he think that DSS don't know his history in America? Is that what a lawyer Jimako think? They have every intelligent report about him. His behavior, his criminal tendencies, they have it. And that is why DSS became very relaxed to hold him. And everybody should watch out. And now, let me tell you people. We told them from day one, this issue is a political issue. All these things, you people, we started telling them from 15 December. When we found out what happened, we told them this. They started to blackmail the leadership. All of you knew that the brother of Mazin Namdekano had been online. We don't want Mazin Namdekano to come out. We don't want him with the one who put him in jail. And people are calling us, asking why did Ejiofo leave? Michael Zekomo left. Uh, this, that. People are blaming the leadership, but I will clear certain things this night so that you stop blaming the leadership and you stop calling leadership because now what they are doing as they have failed you go and hear them talking to people they have brought up a new slogan that the DOS they have abandoned Mazen Namdekano and that is the area I want to clarify
Because we see when we come to meeting people, ask us some silly questions as if they have not been following you what is happening on Mars and the kind of case. That is now the slogan they are using. And if we don't explain ourselves, if we don't explain what is happening, the same way many people believe that Chidas and Waru are listening to Mazin Nakan, that is how they say, Do you see if they abandon him because they want him to go to jail? But we know what all of them are cooking. They are envious, their ambitions for one thing or the other. A lawyer Jimakon wants to use Mazin Nakan case to claim his own dirty record. That was what people should ask. Who is a lawyer Jimakon? A lawyer representing a high profile case that doesn't have an office. Every time he wants to talk about Mazin Nandekanu case, from the court he go to Mama Put. All of them we gather in Mama Put to discuss about Mazin Nandekanu case. They will stay at the back of one hotel to make press press conference on a high profile case like Mazin Nandekanu case. Do you people think this is this is right? Do you people think it's right? Now, let me tell you people something you have to understand. Some said, why did they remove a Jofa? Why did they remove Michael Zekome? You people have seen it also. It's on social media. They talk. All of you knew when Kalonta was sacking a Jofa, um, uh, this thing, because they were going to Mars and Mandekan. They told him. Uh, let me say this thing very clearly. I think he wrote it also. The one person was showing me. I said, I don't care. They talk about, you know, when they talk about stay of execution, stay of execution. Why did he do that? Like, they are rubbish. These are all black men because they don't have anything to say. This group of people went and told Mazen Namdekano, if you go to one of the judgments in the Supreme Court, some of those things they are claiming there were not an order. They were just a comment by some judges. Not all of them agreed on the point. The extraordinary rendition days, they watered it down. That say, since Nigeria have all the necessary distance to uh, extradite somebody, they don't see the reason why they would have done it. That, that it is not really necessary. They never condemn it. They never condemn it. Instead, one of the judges says that, Match the canon to the he knows the remedy to his problems. I am I want everybody to write down this particular point that match him that even him, the appellant, knows the remedy to his problems. It is there in one of the judgments. There now, after that court, this thing they start to go. We told them, they told us that we go to this court from there. They go, we told them there is no need. This issue is a political issue. Let us address it because they want to be. They went and told Mazen Namdekano that a mom maybe Tanyako told them that if they can sack a Jofo, sack Michael Zekome, they should put he will give them bell that he don't like these two people. I'm telling you people what happened. That uh, they don't that a Jofo is the reason why. He's the one that is stopping Mazen Namdekano from coming out. That their mom, Ibn Tanyako, told them. He said they should sack Ozekome. Even Kala Gabi, that she don't want any son in this case. That this case, he gave her Asari Dokubo, that she was the one who gave her Asari Dokubo Bell. She was the one who gave Wazrike Bell. They should remove all these people and bring the application, let me sign, so that they will uh, Namdekano will go home. They use this lies and deception. They say that uh, 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 Azekome was given an award by Nigeria, an award given for Africa. Jonathan recommended is now she's getting the award. Out of how many of them in Africa, three, or they selected in Africa as people who won case in ICC? It was even Jonathan, not even Buhari. They use it, and this thing was given on the eleventh of October. Still, he got his judgment on 13th October. Does that show that he compromised? From the time they said those things, there is one, they call Mandela, the errand boy, they send them to attack Michael Zekome. 
They sent them to attack Michael Zekome, insulted him. But Michael Zekome could not even withstand the insult and threat coming from them. That he was handsome from the case. If he don't hands off, you will not count that. He will kill them, he will do this. You know, this is the threat that comes from their mouth. There was a threat also he gave to Ejiofo, and Ejiofo forwarded the audio for me. And in Jofo, they used the file and hand over to Agabi. They also went to Agabi, insulted Agabi, harassed Agabi, and they took away the file from Agabi. The law became, so now he is the lead counsel. Ogala court, we were born and a quality beans are what? Beans in Asia. Or just get a court. Eh? Eh, now, they say, Mommy, Pinta asked them, if you can chase these two people away, we give them the can of them. That is how they swear in their life to chase black men in Jofo, do everything against Michael Zekome. And these people back out. They don't want problem. After they back out, they now put the bell application. And on that day, Binta Nyaka Piazi Hambadan Wanamunishi, she denied the bed and even threatened them that if they talk nonsense, she will send them out of the court. When they, when they sack their own sons, Nigeria government now went and recruit sons. Some people will be talking. Uh, let a Jofo come back. Call a Jofo now to come back. Let Michael Zekome come back. Call Michael Zekome to come back. Forgetting one thing we told them. These are lawyers. They have their own people. This is a son. For you to call even another lawyer now, he will ask you why did Michael Zekome left the case? You think he will jump to go to take the case? They will say, if you call any lawyer, any son, go and take case for Mazen Nandekano. He will first call Michael Zekeme, my, my, my fellow learned uh, friend. What really happened? I want to pick up this case. And I'm sure he will say what he have witnessed and the person will back out. Another one we call Carlo Agabi. The person will say, no, this is what I had. I, I suffered in the hands of these people. Do you think anybody will be interested to follow the case again? That is how strategically they have destroyed Mazen Namdekanu's case. Strategically, they have destroyed Mazen Namdekanu's case. Because people are no more interested to come to look into the case. No lawyer wants to come close. Everybody has run far. They are very careful. People tell you, no, we can't step in. Let them bring who they want to bring. Everybody now see that the case is a drowning case. And the one of the brother come out, be telling telling people, you see, Aloy Edimako is working. He is getting dates. After two weeks, he's getting this is stupidity and blackmail. The Nigerian government, in the Supreme Court judgment, they were asked to accelerate the case because Nigeria government has concluded with all the plans, all the information they have. That's why they brought in Sam because. Bita Nyako feel that she was being intimidated by Michael Zekome or Carlo Agadi. She wanted them out, freakishly, send them out, bring in sons from Nigeria descent, and that is what is playing out, my people. That is exactly what is playing out. All of you were here. The Nigerian government said they have invaded also. They invaded the Mother Valley because they have concluded. There are cases they have concluded it. That place has finished the job that it was set up to be used against Mazen Namdekano. I'm coming to that in Imo State. But I'm telling you people what have happened because people continue to ask us, why did you remove a job for? I see Mazen Namdekano have right to take anybody he wants him to be his lawyer. He is the, we, you cannot force a lawyer on him. It is what him and his brothers have agreed. That is what he will execute. And why are they doing those things? The hands of politicians 
we are seriously, seriously involved. People giving them money. Now they are not giving them money because they have done the job for them. They have concluded what they want to use against me as in them they cannot. Now the politicians don't answer them again. Nobody give them money again. The governor, everybody have anywhere they went and talk. As soon as they go out, the politicians will mock them. I'm telling you what is happening. They will make caricature of them. That's why the brother went to write a he, he wrote a letter asking the governors to come and uh, uh, the why they are not talking about Mazen Namdekano. When you have already messed up all their you, you use they went everywhere they claim to be leaders of IPO. I have had a conversation where they are being addressed as IPOB leadership as the DOS members. I have come across it. You, you mean by the politicians? By the politicians, they are addressing Kalunta as the leadership of IPOB, him and his younger brother. Because they were being programmed. They gave money, they saw the greed. That is why, they, if you remember the first time we gave sit at home, it was Kalunta who conquered this sit at home. I want to touch this area now for Biafrans to understand. Biafrans, I came on air and they declare a civil disobedience in order for Nigeria government to bring Mazen Namdekano to court when they say he was sick. Kalonta and his brothers, they met the, the, the publication is there. They come against us that the, uh, the elders on Haneze and the hope who's of them have promised them that they are going to bring up Mazen Namdekano. Why should we put sit at home? And there is a NECO exam. That was their end. We had a meeting during that time. He abused us. He abused the members of DOS. Why we should not consult him to hear from him before we push it at home? The people are alive. Powerful was in that meeting. Um, uh, in, in that meeting, some of us, Maza Abani, Maza Oforma, HOD, I was there. I think there is another person also in that meeting. We just call selected people, the person who brought him online. He said, who gave us the authority? And for the fact, we didn't take the authority from him. Their friends listen very well. He went and connived with Ohaneze politicians and say, we call, say hope, who's are them, that they said that they are going to bring Amazon and the can. We are going to three years old. They use it and issue a press release on behalf of their family. While we are trying to obey what Mazen and the Colonel, the order he gave that we should cancel the sit at home, it is very difficult pill to swallow because we know the things we want to achieve with that sit at home. When they have sabotaged us in that sit at home, they turn around and go to Piriba and encourage him to continue with the sit at home. Therefore, this is what happened. They, because they know Eperima is fighting the DOS. They themselves, the siblings of Mazen Namdekano, went to Eperima on several occasions in the compound of Mazen Namdekano. When his younger brother, his sister, and many people they called, there were people in their compound where they were promoting Eperima that he should continue the sit at home. But on one hand, they are fighting us against the sit at home that Mazen Namdekanu told us to stop the, the sit at home we stop but in the back they go to Ipirima and give him tell him continue in in Akumbamba that is what happened in this struggle and then when Ipirima was using them he was using them that time to grow to gather his own wings gather his own wings at a point he start to insult them do this thing they fall apart today they come together tomorrow that's what they're doing that is what they are doing all these things all this attack was to destroy the leadership of ipod what is the purpose they do not want the leadership to achieve anything in the absence of mazen namdekano so that tiras award mazichike doesn't be due as an ipod members can never take any credit for doing anything because Mazen Namdekano, so that tomorrow the crisis is everywhere, so that tomorrow Mazen Namdekano come out. He said, What did you people do when I'm dead? He will come out and they okay, come, come, come. He is the only one who will make the peace. We are above these stupid games. 
that is why they do not want the DOS to succeed, even to champion the struggle. And that is why we decided to keep silent because we found out it is all a conspiracy theory. If we say Mazin Mandekano is sick, the brothers will come out and challenge us that Mazin Mandekano is not sick. That he's not sick. It is hard. Then. If we write Mazin Mandekano is not feeling well, this is how they come out, they challenge it. They say, so we realize that they just want we and them to be quarreling on the social media space because it gives them the energy to orchestrate the things they want to orchestrate. The women in America have been defeated. They have all gone inside. Because when they were working, the in-law to Mazen Mandekano started working with the women in America because they're sending him some small money to lodge in Abuja. He started working with them. He started because of the money he is getting from the women in America. And I want everybody to see it from this side. The moment they do those things, if IPOB was receiving funds all over the world from donations, from do you see IPOB making fundraising? We don't do again. There is no need. Reasons are. Anytime we want to make fundraising, Carl Hunter and his siblings and the Nayanya, they will set up their own fundraising. It's a challenge. The women in America will put up their own fundraising. Because if there is any money that will come to the leadership to try to move this struggle forward, they will make sure it is being clear that IPOB leadership will not get it. I want people to understand. Imagine. The siblings of Mazin, since they hold Mazin Namdekano, all the money coming to IPOB, no more. Maybe only few countries are contributing dues. But how are we moving on to Pokikadia? Only knows. And we have continued to keep this struggle to this moment. That's why I say it becomes an obligation. It is not that we, lo we are in pain, but we continue to drive. If money is coming to IPOB, it's now divided into three. Ito, so, the siblings of Mazin Namdekano have the ones they will collect them within Nen Mayanya so that Kanonta will continue to sponsor his motherland, his own people. He's using to harass, intimidate people. If you talk, you know, if you people know him, anybody he talk with, he will tell you, I will kill you. I will kill you. I will do you. You, you people know him. And I wish I will see him one day. Let him open that mouth. He and his brothers, they, 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 have a, they have countries they destroyed. There are countries they destroyed that don't pay dues any longer. They're collecting money from that side. The women in America, in America, that is a different ball game. Only few people there support, few dedicated people, because they have bastardized IPOB in that place, use the money. You people, name them. Name all the Umar Dakar Highway. Name all of them. Have you all of you forgotten? Umar Daka Highway came in, bastardized the plan, seized. Some of them said the money they collected, they won't release it only when Mazin Mandekano comes out. And this is three years. What are they waiting for? For the struggle to die. Then they remain on one side. With them, they took the website of IPOB in USA and they perima hijacked it from them. And any money coming there, that is what they much using. Deceiving people, IPOB USA. Is it IPOB USA? No. So the leadership decided we can battle with these things because it will make us to lose focus. The little we have, that is what we are using to sustain the struggle. It is very difficult. We sustain ESN. We sustain welfare for people. We sustain everything we can be able to lay our hands to make sure this struggle is alive. And to fulfill this destiny that we are called to defend our people. This is what is happening in Mazen Nandekano's case. This is what is happening to the leadership of IPO. They have bastardized this struggle that anywhere you go to talk to about this struggle, they tell you, ah, these people are not serious. This is in Nandekano and his family. All of you heard it in AI Arise News. When the Nigerian agent who was analyzing was talking in Nandekano, if he wants to come out now, he knows what to do. 
He said it there, denounced the judge, and that is what the family of Oyendo is working towards. They try to isolate Mazin Mandekano from IPOD to see if he can denounce IPOD, which I know Mazin Mandekano, if he does that, as an umbrella, have no post, Anybody going to be, if he denounce IPOB, give IPOB one side, uh, you understand me thinking, Aka Paraya, any day he denounce IPOB, that is the end of him, because that is what they are pursuing. We have heard it also from di some dipl diplomats, foreign diplomats, that their target is he must denounce the struggle, dissolve IPOB, and uh, reintegrate them into Nigeria. And I am saying it this evening, it is an impossible mission. It can never happen for somebody to destroy IPOB when we have never reached our destination. And I want everybody in this this evening listening, do not forget what Mazin Namdekano said. He said it on the radio on many occasions that any day he catapulate, turn around and say that there is nothing like Jafra, somebody should shut him down. We do not want this thing to come into existence. But for those who are pushing Mazin Namdekano to denounce Biafra, they know they are pushing Mazin Namdekano to the extreme because they want to strike a deal the politicians have assigned them to. All they are doing is Namdekano denounce the Biafra struggle. This, did you people see the publication from this stupid boy? The, called Okechukwi Siguzoro. You people know he's the agent of the House of Fulani. Most of you saw what he wrote on the newspaper. He said they are advocating for forgiveness from Namdekano. They should go and beg Asari Dokubo, beg Oba of Lagos, beg Sadwana of Sokoto, Obosim Geji Deda Boy Hana Okechukwi Siguzoro, Obosim Geji Mweteya, Yaka Baba Godi Oso, Yana Hai Godi, for coming out writing rubbish, IPOB should go and beg for Asari Bekuba, beg for other of Lagos that is killing our people, beg for Sadwana of Sokoto. What a hell are these people talking about? Asari Bekuba, other of Lagos said that people should be thrown into the lagoon. As what? This is how they are making caricature of this struggle. That Mazin Namdekano should denounce Biafra and go for restructuring of Nigeria and bring anybody. I am making it very clear. This is a suicide mission. Anybody that tries that nonsense. People have died in this struggle. Thousands of people are in jail. If people don't know, it is not only Mazin Namdekano that is inside the prison. Many people are missing. We do not know where many of our innocent IPOB members are here today. Kept under the GSS dungeon and somebody is coming out writing rubbish. Rubbish on the pages of the newspaper. We are no more happy. And this is what we are passing through. They are being used from all angles. The man analyzing in this thing, they make caricature of the letter they wrote because they know the opinion of the governors. They know some of them that set them up. When they write finish, the people will make caricature of them. Say, look at them. They think they were smart. Look at them. A politician said that he brought the brother of Mazen Namdekanu close to know the caliber of people they are. And he realized that they are beggars and chats. A politician they went and they dined with and they snapped pictures and he said, I wanted to know the caliber of these people. I don't know they are that Oliver Twist. Beggars. He didn't know they what nothing. This is how they have tried to and they go. Everybody should tell me, are these people members of IPOB in the real sense? In IPOB code of conduct, when you don't come to IPOB after three months, you are no more an IPOB member. In the real sense, 
toughness of them. Are they IPOB members? They are siblings of Mazen Namdekano. When they come to make their press release, they make siblings of Mazen Namdekano. It's a lawyer, Jimako, coined that word for them and told them be using canons. The canons. Do you think government care for a family then? Government care for institutions. And they have used these things, destroy IPOB, put Mazen Namdekano in a very tight corner because of their greed and all the things they are pressed to make money and i am asking all this money they have made what are they using it for is it not at least somebody is doing something you get to a point you say it's enough are they not capable enough to take care of themselves and leave Mazen Namdekano to be able to their friends to be able to release him from that dss dungeon Today, a lawyer Jimako has committed himself that he need to he's going to bargain for himself for the Mazen Mamdekano. He will say certain things because DSS have. Let me people tell you also, shock you people. Do you know that since that time, a lawyer Jimako came to the television and told people that they could him and I think they're all working for Mazen Mamdekano. Do you know that from that day, the DSS have never allowed people you remember that on last thing when he went and visited Mazen Namdekano. He came out, he said, I will visit him again. Ask him. After a lawyer have made that interview, DSS got the point what they want. They have never allowed Dan Olasi to visit Onyendo again. And many other people. They stopped. They became strict. Have you ever heard that Ozekome went to DSS to see Mazen Namdekano? They stripped him naked, take documents from him. Have you ever heard it? If you ask them, they say it's the same law. What they have caused. They have made a mess of this case. And I'm telling you, dear friends, this evening, the ball is in our court. We are the only people that can rescue Mazin Namdekano. And we are going to do it. You see, Mazin Namdekano can never go down in the hands of the Nigerian DSS. All our plans, all our plan B are kept intact. And it shall all be executed with time. All of them. We know the people. We know the people holding Mazen and the canon. We know them. We know all the people from Wike to Devu Mahi to Hopus and all that. Those who are hell bent. But Mazen and the canon will never see the light of the day. We know them. But that's our book and Bobby Mini also said, Cable Julia, gone at home. Mazi, I will leave the issue of Mazi Nam the Kano here before I go to another topic, which is criminality in Imo State, also as a case study. And Mazi, the link, Mazi, before what you, is happening to Mazi, Mazi can you hear me? Thank you. Yeah, Mazi, I before, can hear you. Yes, mm. before you enter there, of which also is uh, almost um, the same, you know, at this point of you know, um, Mazen and the Kano siblings having uh, criminals that are with them, they are using to attack, harass, and attack people, kidnap. How do IPOB differentiate or, uh, uh, you know, defend IPOB as a movement, as an organization, in the eyes of? Uh, the Nigeria institution because this is what they are going to use against Mazen Namdekano. So, and you you know, they have uh, for me, I believe that Nigerian DSS is as you said, they are professionals. So forget about what we say when they want to work, they work professionally, they have gadget, they have everything. And I believe they have, uh, uh, you know, bugged conversations among, you know. Oh, these people and uh, the criminals. Now, how do we, can we come out and say no? Mm, uh, for example, we say no, uh, Mazen and the Kano siblings, they are not IPOB. Uh, can it make sense? So, this is a very messy situation. How do we, how do you think that we can differentiate this? Please. Ma, ma, Mazi, ma, Mazi, let me tell you something. The DSS, they know everything. Are you understanding me? 
the DSS knows everything. The Nigerian politicians who are dealing with them knows everything. As I told you, one of the governors said, we have every intelligence about the IPOB, the way it operates, the family of Nam De Kano, how they operate. He said, we have everything. Mazi, it is our responsibility and our obligation to explain these things because the DSS are listening. They know if you don't defend yourself, are you understanding me? We make it, they know in as much as they want to destroy IPO, it is an advantage for them. Mazi, it is an advantage for them. It is not only Mazin Nandekano they want. It is not only Mazin Nandekano they want to put behind bars. They want to put every IPOB member. They want to quench the agitation. That is their main goal. That is why after they, they hold Mazin Nandekano about to go to court, they declare Mazin Chikedozim. You think after Mazin Chikedozim that is the end? They will find another person they will catch. They will declare another person to put you in disarray. Put they are not giving up. It is a state. We must understand those things. You know, for many years, some stupid morons will come on social media. What are you doing, man? Remove Mazin Nandekano from DSS. But they have done, they sit at home for two years, they kill our people, do everything with the Terima and those criminals, and many people have they released Mazin Nandekano. Instead, what Nigerian government is having against Mazen Nandekan, they have pushed it out from felony case and enter into terrorism and criminality against Mazen And that is what the family of Mazen Nandekan is pushing. Remove people, IPOB, don't they understand me? Thinking that if he does that, he will escape from what is happening in IPOB. That's why you say, we're going to have to forge a cat maria. What kept Mazen Namdekano is IPOD. And that is the umbrella that is giving him shade. But if you walk away from this umbrella, I'm telling you, Mazi, it's our duty to explain to them. And DSS knows though, the siblings of Mazen Namdekano are not IPOD members. They know. It's just like what happened in IPO that Mazen Nandekano was renditioned. Somebody come out from somewhere, a movement, a global movement, somebody who is not an IPO member to hijack IPO and say he is now the leader. Where have such things happened? The family of Mazen Nandekano knows they are not IPO, they, they are not even a principal officer. They want to hijack the leadership of IPO. Every one of you were here when they try, try nowhere, they try to recommend people for Mazen Namdekan. They, they were recommending him that the DOS uh, do this, DOS have done that. They try to build a very bad. I told you, let me tell you people this. Thing. You know, I used to say it. Everything Mazen Namdekan will say inside the DSS, the DSS, they, they listen to it. Some sympathizers will say, these people. <laughs> If they come there, just only IPO, the chief, they don't say Motinas and will do us or sack them or do understand me, remove them or go. That is what they say. He said, These people, do they really want their brother out? So, Mazi, it's our duty. We explain it to them. Come and tell us that. Yeah, can you come and tell your friends? Yes, I am the leader in IPO. I deserve to be the deputy leader of with Mazin and the Colonel. Let him come out and tell us. So we have, we have our code of conduct. There is no position for deputy leader, even when they were recommending it. And why did Macron went on television and say IPOB does not have leader apart from that there are leaders? Just, that is when he's trying to justify. Do you see that hand after a Jimakon to IPOB? Allah Jafra Gemeya, Allah Jafra Gemeya, yeah, be done now because the whole, the problem is coming for him. He tried to discredit IPOB leadership. There is no leader. There have many leaders now. That is why he was on that and told them uh, 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 there is no difference between autopilot and that uh, they are all working for Mazen Namdekano. And I said they are not working for Mazen Namdekano. If that we are not aware, we don't know. 
because of his greed for money. The money they are sending for him is what is pushing him. They continue trying to complicate Mazin Nandekano case. As I'm telling you, those guys don't want Mazin Nandekano to come out because they have committed a lot of atrocity in the name of Mazin Nandekano. People they took money from, people they, when, you people don't understand when they hold Mazin Nandekano. Carl Enter was gallivanting everywhere. He's the head of Lagos because AG head of Lagos are Nande Madhego. They were taking the head of Lagos. Oh, yeah, wanna, and I filed the case in the UK. One million pounds. Yeah, nah, nah, go. Oh, yeah, that was their source of fraud. The source of their fraud. I am the head of Liga. He claimed, he didn't say even that he's the, the head, at least he's claiming siblings. Why is he claiming to be IPOB legal head? Who gave it to him? Because that was what they coined. They used it to take money. Everybody saw what happened on the court case. Do you people know why Mazin Namdekano reacted the way he reacted in the court? Many of you don't understand. Many of you who are also smart can understand. Mazin Namdekano was disappointed. That was what they what they told him. They told him just come. You understand me, mommy? Mommy is going to give you bail. Everything has finished. It was like an outburst that Mazin Namdekano. You were surprised that he was denied bail. Because they told him, they convinced him. Now, mommy, mommy said, we'll get, Come on, guys, to change your fortune. One day, I mean, I give you back. And, and when the and job is even done, a whole leader of uh, IPOB global movement is even soliciting, even if I let me be even, even house he, arrest, thank you. He's soliciting for even, Ma, you, say, uh, you know, uh, I will take a meal honestly mm -hmm. because because they took Mazin Mandekano by surprise. He didn't know. Mazin Mandekano come with full confidence that if he come Binta, the DSS know all those things. I'm telling you, the DSS, they know all that plan, all that plan. And that it is a kind of reaction because he was shocked that he was denied bail. As Nandi was saying, Marzi, please continue as you are saying because I'm um, on the criminality because um, uh, you know as you give insight you know the Nigerian government is a country what we should understand is we shouldn't underrate Nigerian government it doesn't matter we call them zoo we call, but they are working in, in anything like this we are fighting against a country let us not forget so they use different intelligence it. services in order to, and you will not know. Mazi, please continue to of the next step, as you are saying. Please go on. Okay. Uh, dear friends and lovers of freedom, I am going to the second point. It is also linking why Mazin Namdekano is still in detention and why Nigeria is pushing for an accelerated court hearing because they have concluded their plans. That is the criminality in Imo State. Let me take it. I'm using him a state also as a case study. As a case study, there were some other you know shots for criminality in part of Anambra South. But I'm why I'm talking about also is because everybody it was where we were shouting from end of after the election in Anambra 6th November. We started shouting about criminality we started shouting about people using mo sit at home to carry out crimes in our room the problem we were trying to curtail many of them there was one of them with who was using monday sit at home when we were curtailing that particular person the person ran to the family of mazin and the Kano. he ran to them for cover because we are pursuing him. And I'm not going for security reasons. I'm not going to talk about that. But when this guy, we pursue him, we found out he want to take cover that we are pursuing him, that he's carrying it at home. Nobody condemned him. Nobody said anything. We keep silent to protect the struggle because he is nobody also rather than a criminal. Now, 
if most of you have heard what is happening in our so of recent people that are working with the nigerian government they brought out and i will mention only one name if need be i will mention others if you see how the nigerian military they are parading in the market make flyers dancing ipob bondojo say no to ipob all these things people do not want to know why are they still connecting ipob with the perima to anything ipob is doing because there are things Hmm, connections people talk to somebody people they, they are connecting all those things like i say the dss they are not stupid the dss they are not stupid there are many people in their custody they have had many in, in witnesses they are people they are interviewing from time to time when they catch the people when those people are caught the dss ask them questions they will give information, give information, give information, give information. You remember this guy they call Uche, Lion Heart. Mazin Mandekano dismissed him from IPOB even before they launched ESN. He was dismissed. Long time has not, you know, I want to say this and also the Nigerian police and the Nigerian DSS because for them continuing to level everything on ipod on ipod shows how biased they are and shows how they just want to destroy the image of ipod we know that if you are in the police station or if you belong to any group even dss and you are being expelled and it is not public that everybody knows that this person is no more a member of the at least IBOB used to go to the level announce it on the radio we release a memo telling the world and the general public that this person has been expelled from IPOB so if you're a police officer you committed a crime you are involved in robbery you are involved in some a criminal activity and you are being expelled from the police or you are a soldier you are being expelled from the police after two years you are expelled you are being expelled you went somewhere and commit something and you come back and say he is still a police officer can this be accepted is it is it accepted of course not it is not it's not it is not people you expel even in their political parties we saw people that where is this man uh, this man they beat they beat him in the high court uh, um, uh, this labor man do you understand me that they said he's expelled uh, um, uh, from labor party he came claiming chairman that is the distance they beat him very well and send him home just somebody IPOB have already expelled. We call out places. IPOB is not here. We don't have anything to do here. We, we, we shut down everything. We have our Imo State coordinator, the Diapola. They knew which we announced it here. Shut down no more IPOB in our look. When we found out things were going on, what was about to happen there? We shut it down. She the one you could who was expelled in IPOB even years before formation of ESN? Who was the former coordinator of Imo State? When Eperima came up, they ran to Eperima and they started, they started recruiting for Eperima. She the watch who She the watch who that was stole our radio, defrauded many people, and he was expelled from IPOB on air. Is the same people these criminals gathered and when they caught them what they will do they, because they know some IPOB members before they will now be pointing show us IPOB member they will point show us IPOB member they will point but the police knows and I'm also using this opportunity there is one the evil state woman leader who was arrested in 2021 
that was detained in the DSS. When we got information that she has become a mole, because she came out from the DSS and become an agent for them. She have people in detention have seen her come to DSS office to pass information. They carry her in car to point at IPOB members. And instructions have been given this person away. She's no more an IPOB member, talking of being the woman leader. But they're still using these people going and picking IPOB members. And those people, they call them, and those people knew that they are no more IPOB. Some of them looking, because there is something that's happening in, especially in Imo State and Anambra, when criminals are being pursued, when they find the heat is so much, they join the vigilante. They join a bag. That is the pro That is why in Nigerian police, criminals and in the nigerian army criminals will never disappear inside the police and the army because they do not whether intentional or not intentional they do not make any background check some are criminals inside the jail they bring them out and recruit them in the police former highway robbers former criminals they bring them out people one politician maybe he was killing Maybe he was killing a lot of people for the politician. He was killing, he is a political thug. He has been killing for the politicians. Maybe in the jail, they put him in jail. The, the, the politician or the governor will use his connection, tell him, okay, it's okay now. Uh, just stay inside one year. After he brings him out there and they recruited him in the police so that if he comes back to office, he can be standing beside him as an orderly. Can stand, he, they will become people that are protecting him former criminals and they hand them over guns they will use the guns and commit many criminal offenses the same thing happened in Imo state when the criminals were being pursued as we are pursuing them mounting pressure on them they withdrew some of them see that because some of them have never lived outside Imo state they withdrew and go and join a bag DSS recruited them. Just like uh, if you go to Australia, there, the guy they call Ubuagu and Wale Wale. They were part of the people butchering people in also When we were shouting, he was the one who facilitated and hand over that the guy the, the, the guy they call engineer. He was the one, he was serving him. When the pressure come too much. He realized that the engineer, whether they say he killed his brother or what, he now planned and bring out engineer where he, he handed him over. And he ran. He, he's on video. He tell you how he entered there and served them. It's not that he entered. He was part of them. And today he come out. The blood in his eye is why you see him killing at will, killing anybody. He is now on a contract killing. If you go to the office on they will tell you they are into killing business. That's what they will tell you. That we are into killing business. People killing each other. You have family problems for 20 years. They will go and call these boys. They come and execute it for you. They kill many IPOB members. They kill veterans of IPOB. Land disputes. These were all contractors they were using to kill, and they are killing to you today. Like this Oguago, communities, villages, they have problems with. He used under the shed. And the, the one they call hotel or the mayor, he said it is the DSS that is killing. They are the one who put the people there. He said it is the DSS that is killing. And the people are watching them, and as they are killing, they are connecting them say that it is in them they cannot uh, um, uh, family they are connected them is in them because i am saying this thing because this is what is coming from their mouth but one thing they don't want to draw the line they will try to put ipod put ipod if you ask them why are you putting ipod he told you they should carry this killing and go to ebay 
they should take this killing and go to a police state when they are saying this whom do you think they are pointing their fingers at thank you if you go to us many of them they will tell you this criminal there is something they are saying they are talking it they are saying it everywhere when they are saying those words do you, are you waiting for them to call Mazen Namdekano's name they are telling you that Mazen Namdekano is responsible is it Mazen Namdekano that is in detention no yes that is the person they are talking because they are connecting people criminals and some people who are making some calls in the, which Mazen Namdekano which I will say he can never give approval of this kind of things he cannot unless and, but that is not the foundation of IPOB. Because why I'm saying this is the campaign. You people saw flyer, they are sharing everywhere. Nobody, some people just see it. Ah, this is a very big campaign against IPOB. And these people, you ask them, they said, hey, go to, tell these criminals here, take it to Afaru Ibek, let them go there, or they go to a bony state, there are bushes in the, don't you people know who they are talking? Don't you people know who they are referring to? We're supposed to know. We're supposed to know the people they are referring to. Now, along the line, they are also telling you one thing. They tell you in our so you know that they don't have this language or job that it is a foreign language it does not come from them and they will tell you again that people a bony people that is to to tell you what we have been shouting about these criminals they are importing from a bony by a very much they will tell you again that in their language you know so they don't have something like a copy issue copy issue that all people or some people don't speak this kind of language that it is only a bony people that speaks this language kopiishi kopiishi meaning it is foreign people they brought into their village i do not want to say one thing here in order not to complicate issues but what i'm saying is that the DSF and the Nigerian government should know that Mazin Mandekan is under their custody for three years. Being manipulated by them and all the people visiting him, the DSF knows. They know what they are calculating. They know they set the trap to use what happened in also to use it against Mazin Mandekan. Because they were not having enough. And why they did it? was to take him away so that nobody will be talking about agitation no not agitation it is criminality it is kidnapping it is terrorism that is all why they did what they did in all to become a case study against mazen nandekano and that is what they are bringing on the table in the court and that is what they are using against mazen nandekano in the court and we were shouting about this I never joined the struggle for any criminality. I have my record. I always say it, I'm a man of self-accountability and deep-rooted immorality. Self-discipline. People can go and ask about me. And many other IPOB members I have seen, notable men, doctors, lawyers, businessmen, it's people who have pedigree in diaspora. These are people that they intentionally want to rubbish our efforts to fight for our people. The criminality in our law, that is why they finally invaded. Did you see they invaded the model? Does it mean they could not invade it all this while? No, they could. I want to make certain clearance here because when they talk they talk about people uh, this person sky they talk about i am asking everybody every intelligent agency even them that is talking even the tell or the movie that are claiming that most of these criminal are ipob esm members sky everybody know who is sky 
because the moment we saw the criminality IPOB went into deep intelligent gathering the one they call Sky was a prisoner in Imo State Prison Facility it was during the jailbreak he was in the prison because he was an assassin and a, a kidnapper and he was in the jail he was working for them the politicians in Imo State when the prison break all of them gathered there the the, Nigeria, the, the, the Imo State government cannot say he doesn't know they knew all these things. Hope was Adema is a known criminal everybody knew. He became a governor and all the people he's doing all kinds of crimes and surrounded him. When you try to protect the people, every one of you knew when they paraded the boy they call Ejima. Ejima, him and Hope was Adema come from the same grand matana place. When Hope was a senator, it is a Jima is his rainmaker. That a Jima that they paraded that time, uh, searching as a war, reaching as a war. That a Jima used to carry out rainmaker for Hope who's of him when he is a senator. He is one of his political thoughts. When they have disagreement, they run this side. They have all of them. And also, all of them have sky. Is it not? From a, is it not working with politicians? or is it not all working with them with the politicians? Don't they know who Sky is? Don't they know who Mpoto Malika is? If they don't, how can they even go to the government if they don't have connections? How can they even be talking? And when all these things happen. They take a, they go and ask these criminals. He said, Imagine somebody, everybody knew that immediately ESN was launched. ESN are IPOB volunteers. You cannot be in ESN without having a unit, without having a coordinator who recommended you, know you very well that you are not a criminal. You cannot, because we want to trace down to where you come from. People will come out, they say, somebody in 2021, he tell you, uh, uh, 2021, maybe after, after launching of year, he tell you, I'm uh, an ESM member. When did, they, when did they recruit you? I was recruited in 2022. What is your unit? My unit is Tango 1. Who is your co uh, my coordinator? He said, is uh, a gentle the Yahoo? Is gentle an IPOB member? Something on Facebook. They are demonstrating. They don't mention even the Jafra liberation again. The liberation army that is they are claiming that i make shoot and kill and people the videos are all there but have you ever seen that where they mention their names have you ever seen where they mention their names no they don't mention they will tell you it's ipob esl they intentionally and on the way for them to destroy ipod that is why they gather criminals from all angles come they want to promote we are that is why Eberima was bringing them from i'm telling you there was inter-society reported this thing there was a youth boss a coaster boss five is it youth council is it youth council move five coaster bosses from a bony state and come inside an umbrella you ask yourself, how did these five bosses move from a bony state down to Anambara with all the checkpoints? Nobody stopped them. Nobody harassed them. It was when some of them come down, they started calling some people. Yeah, man, IPO have been everywhere in the grassroots. They start calling some people, say, ah, they brought them all inside this thing. They say they should come and stay in the bush. Say bush, they pay. But the car used in transporting them was a, look, a government vehicle. Is the youth council or association brought them inside Ibuku in Anambara and they started drafting them places they want to be and put them in our city, a majority of them. And after all these things, they will still come outside, they say IPOD because out of envy to destroy the DOS, the siblings of Mazin and the Khan went extra mile to take power from IPOB, to destroy IPOB because they were being given money. 
destroy the leadership. They don't know if you destroy the leadership, even then. Mazen Namdekano is alive today because of IPOB leadership, the DOS. All the rubbish they are doing, I want to also talk as I'm talking this criminality. There are some stupid people in IPOB. Since they hold Mazen Namdekano, all of them disappear. They were going underground, walking with a perimeter, walking with people. I don't want to mention their names because it will give, it will shock many of you. They, because these people work, if you don't give them money, they don't work. If they dash them small money, they come out, start writing. But some of us, if you call yourself IPOV media, you know where we gather. You know where we do our analysis. And since 2019, today nobody have infiltrated the main IPOB media house that is why we have the stability we have in this battle there are some reference because they go to Mazen and they cannot hang around him they shout these are psychophants if they don't give them money they don't talk only when they get money they come on Facebook and start yabbing rubbish claiming that they are fighting for Biafra no money nothing if there is no money, they start to criticize and blackmail people. Some of them. You ask them, I am sick. He's hiding. This one, and they are all deceptive individuals. At the end of the day, immediately money pass their hand. They all come out on social media, start talking. Because we are confident of the people who have all this we have people who are hardcore whether they like it or not they will perform our writers they are there to analyze things and bring information it's not when you get credit you come on social media you start yabbing a yab worker at all because they give you money who is giving who this is why you people bastardize what we are doing. People look at us, they think with what they, they, with the siblings of Mazen and the Kano, they come out, they're writing junk. They have set their own army. They want to have their own, they make their own security, mother land. They have made their own radio. They've made their everything IPOB. Even as we formed agri something, and last, when we announced this agricultural something last year, they went and formed their own agricultural group and put their sister as head of the district. I know, Leleha. I know, Leleha. We just they watch them. If I know, if I give it our army and alpha, now the family of Mazenam the Kano will be making this thing or part of IPOD. I will never join IPOD. We'll be doing this thing they are doing. The life of millions of people are at stake and they're playing politics with our lives. But I'm telling them one thing. Easy Chinas and Wolu can never go down for this rubbish. Because they are evil. Calm down, return back because they are planning. How do we destroy these people? Hey, chief, one and be able to read the loose and all two walk up on one and walk up on one will wash off. Organic, I may have this is the rubbish they have committed in IPOB in this struggle. The leadership do not romance with criminals. If, if I want to ask people now, if we know you a criminal, we don't even say, even say, if you survive it, we know you a criminal. I brought on you never come back. If we got her. But what we are doing is more spiritual than all these things people are doing here. And I am. What we are doing is deep. We have used our mouth and wake all the spirit in Biafra land to come and fight with us after we have woken all of them. When our people start criminality, you don't know your head will go inside. You think you will go free? This is how they are black men in IPO. If you go to that valley, if you see value, if you see pit, you think the SS don't have it. More than 5,000 people have been killed in also. Kidnapped, snatch their cars, 
imagine where they will go and get 30 cars, 20 cars. Where are those people? Killed? Criminals? And they all were using. And also, there are people also, they are calling. They call people. Our people have become even cowards. Somebody will call you, uh, give us money for, for ESN, you know we are in the bush or this is, and you run and give them money. After you have given them money, you come back to tell IP or uh, somebody called me, since like ESN, you know, okay, oh, oh, oh. when you go and pay the criminals, you come back to IPOB to tell us. Did you contact us when you want to pay them the money? Many of them will pay 5 million, 10 million. When they pay the criminals, finish. They now come and tell us, uh, and they said they were ESN. But when you were making the negotiation, talking with them, doing everything, you never contacted IPOB. You never told us that some people are calling you in the name of IPOB or threatening you in the name of IPOB. So only when you have paid them 10 million, 5 million, 20 million, you turn around and say, uh, they said they were IPOB and you want us to start running Helter Skelter for you. What we don't know about. Had even you told us, we will sweep into action. Even the number they are talking to you, we will go after them with the way we handle our own cases. But you won't tell us. When you have paid them, pay, finish paying, then you come back and tell us they took money from me. They said they were IPOB. I didn't know. They said they were calling me. I sent them five million. They take another. We always hear when you people have finished paying them. Now you come back. To bring the problem your garbage with IPOB, tell us it was IPOB. People are there, people are in Lagos so calling you also, telling you they are ESN on telephone. If you don't give us money, we will, you know, everything you, you send them money after sending them money. They are in Lagos, they are in the north. Nigerian police, they call they target some rich, evil guys, some even in the market. Some of them are inside with them in the market. Criminality, our people have exhibited because of money. They damage the work of IPOB. And they will come out and say, uh, 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 Let me tell you, people, it is time we remove emotions so that our emotions will not be used against us. Let us always look at issues critically, know the dangers. We are fighting for a nation. Everybody must know that our fight transcends any individual. A nation will continue to exist. It is either you people want us to move forward or you people tell us we are tired from this struggle. Let us all of us go and rest. Then you people tell us. But one thing I can promise any one of you, you know what they want? All these black men, all these things they put so that the leadership of IPOB will back down and said we are no more doing as some people have done already some we said i'm not interested again so that when we back down they now find a way and convince Mazin Mandekano that the leadership have left the struggle they have abandoned you Mazin Mandekano will say really i told them they will leave they will they are the one to abandon me not me so when they come out they would come on their radio and say, when Mazen Namdekanu was in the detention, they abandoned Mazen Namdekanu, they destroyed the struggle, they are the one. Then, ha, banyu no ma, banyu no sisisu no chukare wachina samoru na chike, those are members of the DOS. Then they come out and become, they claim the Messiah. But they have condemned people who have fought for them with their life. Dear friends, let us open eyes. That is the ultimate reason why they want the DOS to be destroyed. So that the struggle will not continue. So they won't blame on somebody that the reason why Mazin Namde cannot catapulate is because the DOS abandoned him. They abandoned the struggle. So he didn't have any other choice. They surrender. Some of you will accept. Oh, when is Yoku? Oh, is Yoku here? Oh, when 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 is Yoku here? Then you na chugari watching us and all na chike dozim and other members of the DOS. I am not here in a defensive mode. We know all the game. We know everything they are planning, and we are going to make sure that all these plans failed, and we will come out on top to tell our people 
we know freedom fighting is not easy but when you are called for a mission you must fulfill your destiny there were mass there were mass there were um there is something i want you also to touch you know in all this uh because when in, in all these uh travels mazin amdekano is the person that is bearing the brunt mostly because he is physically suffering now how is there any way the leadership will also um uh, intervene or do something about the situation because as you said and as you might know uh, the whole thing katani lakbra the whole cobweb is to jail mazinam the and or or uh, to make him to renounce Biafra because mazinam the is a human being you know? there is a, a limit you know like uh, the law of elasticity as you may know there is a limit and elastic will be drawn you know it will break no matter that it is docile in it, you know it is flexible but there is a limit when he see because all these things are playing on his head also the dsa these is are intelligent job you know so is there no way is there any way that uh, what these people because uh, what we are doing we are engaging in fight it's a fight Every, all around whether with uh, uh, these people i mean kind of family everything ipop is engaged in or it's not a it's not an easy job so whether there is no is there any other way in order to also uh, rectify this before it becomes too late for Mazin Namdekano not for the struggle I mean for Mazin Namdekano Mazin please go on Mazin I hope I'm coming out clear right I will tell you one thing I will tell you one thing one of our major goals is to make sure that Mazin Nam the Kano regain his freedom. Are you understand me? And because whenever we want to display or execute some plans we have and made it public, it is being countered by the family, the siblings. If you doubt me, let us say something now. What we plan to do. Tomorrow they will counter it. They will call it they will bastardize it. And you start asking yourself, what is the benefit for all these things? Mazi, we are fighting for Mazen and the Kano. I'm fighting for the Afrans. Is there, have they heard that one day that they are making fundraising for Chila Samoru or Chike Dozim? For them, everything is all about money because that is their mindset and that is what they do. They think everything is all about money, 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 money. That's what they think. Mas the leadership decided to keep every move they make for the release of Mas Nande Kano to correct certain things and make sure that at the end Mas Nande Kano will come out from the hands of the Nigerian government alive. It is not something. You know, they have made, let me tell you, they don't know they were bastardizing the struggle. If the leadership takes decision about certain things, they come out and start shouting. Did Mazen Namdekano approve it? How can, how can we be going to Mazen Namdekano? Who is in the DSS custody? The DSS are hearing whatever they say there and go there to take some what we know is good for the struggle. You know why? You know why they want us to pass every information? because they know good or bad they will hear it either that Mazen Namdekano will tell them okay see this is like they come out and attack that particular thing or they will sabotage it that is what they do the leadership is we are not let me tell you Mazen you know sometimes it became you know you are trying to work out things if if I can tell the Afrans in case everybody I have to let it know do you know even if you try to work things out even the wife of Mazin and the Kano, many of you do not know that Kalonta sent the father message and told him that they will that he will assassinate her he will kill the wife of Mazin and the Kano. it's on record this is the level these people are going 
they say they will assassinate, they will kill Mazin Nam the Kano wife. I want you people to know the level. If these people can go to this point to threaten the wife of their brother, you will know what they can do. That is to show you the level these people are going. All is to make sure that they destroy the DOS or if the wife says something, why not allow this structure to be? She will get a threat to be killed. But I, you know one thing, you see, you see this kind of people who always open their mouth. They will open mouth, threatening everybody. I will kill you, I will kill you. Anybody they do, they are opening mouth, talking rubbish. I kill you, I kill you, I kill you. As if they have the life, they are the one who created the life. There is no evil man you will open mouth. Unless a fool, you tell him you will kill him. And he will stand be looking at you. You will kill him. Only cowards do that. They wake up threatening people. Anybody, it's very easy in his mouth. Sometimes I start to wonder that the guy may have some mental some people say it's mental open. i don't know what i would call it but he is not correcting his mind because sometimes they talk rubbish they threaten people kill you kill you kill you kill you oh just a back rock i'm again off the ball mazi the duos is always day and night mapping our strategy how do we solve this problem and it's a problem we are the one the burden lies on our shoulder and we are the one going to do it and at the end of the day Mazen Nandekano will regain his freedom and people will say indeed you people were called for the restoration of Biafra there were Mazen there were there were Mazen um, also um, this the question I want to bring in again you know, like uh, of late, lastly, they are now giving flimsy excuses. I mean, uh, Carlos, let me call it like that, the Carlos sibling and the lawyer, that they have to back out. They are, they will, if uh, this and that, they will back out of the of the case of Mazin and the Carlos. Of which all these the flimsy excuses they are they are giving, it has been something. Uh, it is something that uh, you have been shouting on here on radio, telling them, look, look, this, 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 that, that. Now, what do you think about uh, this, their stance? This, their stance? Ma Ma what do you think? Um, uh, I want to ask everybody, everybody listening, is there anything new? A lawyer Jimako have done since he took over Mazin Nam the Kano case. Is there anything new? Is there anything he is telling via France that we have not heard for since 2001? Is there anything? Nothing new. Is there anything? Anything? Any, just I want if there is anything. Somebody said they get court date very fast, and I told the person he said lie because. The government have already said it that they need this case. They need an accelerated hearing. It is not in their hands any longer. Even that day in the court, when Ben Tanyako said, "Okay, I have denied him, Ben. Can we continue the trial?" Uh, then uh, Lloyd Michael said, "My Lord, he is not uh, ready. They are not ready." But I told them I used to pass. Say, you people have the case file. Go and study the case since you want to go to court. Stop all this small media propaganda you are accusing this person. You know what they want? Do you know why I don't want to talk much? And I don't want to, when they are doing those things, I don't talk. Yes, I don't want to talk. Then as I come here, I will say it the way it is. They are looking how to distract the attention of the promises they have made to Mazen and the Are you understanding me? They are looking for who to put the blame on. A lawyer, Jimako, later wrote, I, think I hear when he wrote it, that uh, it should be the new mantra, no trial, no. But is it not what we have said all this time? Is there anything new? That everybody should turn it to be the new mantra. The new mantra, no more trial. Blah, 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 blah. I saw the brother giving Nigerian government order. They must send Mazin Namdekano to Kujé. They must do this in Gapor, no Mazin Namdekano, Boba and Kujé. Go and take him from DSS. Because you people are saying court of execution that they get the 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 
they granted Mazim Nam the kind of appeal court granted him, discharged him and acquitted him. That was on 14th October. Check the date. By Monday, that was on a weekend. By Monday or Tuesday, the Nigerian government went and make an appeal. So that is where they say he didn't bring a Mazin Nam the can within that weekend. I see if a Jofa and those people will go to the place and take Mazin Nam the can out. Since those people could not do it, since themselves have the power, let them bring up Mazin Nam the can. And stop all this propaganda. What they are looking for is who will be having discussion. They will say, it is you now, make Mazin Nam the can did not come out. Because every day they will go to court. Don't be surprised. As they, they have, they, they will collect money again. They, they will call people. The other time they collected money for flights, for chapter they will play to fly Mazin Nam the Kano direct. This one again, they brought cars in front of uh, chartered cars. They immediately come at the enter straight to Afaruku. These are jokers. Mazin, they are looking for who to blame. They are looking for who they will say it is the reason why Mazin Nam the Kano did not come out. They are looking for saying who this is what this person is saying. That is why Mazin Nam the Kano is not coming out. That's why you see them every day. They find one propaganda or the other. They raise propaganda. When they say they, they, they want to, they will go. They say, Chinasa is anti-Israel and the pro-Hamas. I laugh at them. Do you understand me? I don't give a shit. Because they are trying to poke. Do you understand me? To poke. But they don't know if they provoke me, I say certain things. Biafra will descend on them. If they provoke me, I used to tell them. If they provoke me, but I don't want to be provoked because I have passed this stage of people to provoke me. I have grown more mature, more than who I am before. I have learned to handle cases, handle there, if not by the grace of Chukwuki Kabiama. And if I am not genuine, by now I would not be in this struggle because I am one of the person. In this struggle, I have been blackmailed more than any other person in this struggle since the rendition of Mazin Nam the Kano. If I am lying, anybody can put me wrong. I am the one of the most blackmailed. I am one of the most haunted. That's even what surprised them. Even they come in the night, they cannot get, they come by different ways. But I was born that way. That is how I came. There is nothing they have not done. They will attack me both spiritually. To the level, hope who's on them will come to attack me spiritually. Himself. It is not by our power. Any day we finish our own assignment, we give way. But I'm telling them one thing. Even our politicians who do not want to come out and they seek for the release of Mazin and the Kano. I am happy that we are grooming more hardcore Biafras who are growing up. I think Obun Nayono has died. Many of them will be dying. By God's grace, in the next 10 years, we may become the most senior. Hardliners, Biafra restoration, do you understand me? Uh, 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 um, uh, hardliners. We are going to grow old. We become the brain. They cannot kill all of us. We have, we have impregnated people with the Biafran dream. That no matter what they have done, we are now looking ahead. We are saying, even if we continue this project, in the next 10 years, we may find ourselves to be the elders in the society. And Nigeria knows what they will get by that time. They will know that before they talk, they will remember the names of the people who have been championing for the freedom of their people for the past 20 or 25 years. And they will know this is no go area. And at that time, <laughs> they will know there will be no way. We did not come accidentally if we and you see let me tell you this struggle if we don't accomplish it we come again in the next life 
in our place reincarnation is real nobody should underestimate that if we fail to complete this mission we will come back again in the next life and continue the struggle they like it or they don't like it and they can also testify that some of us the way we behave the way we talk how the spirit in us it is not that normal nigerian spirit they're supposed to know we are those people that they try to kill those plants they try to cut but the seeds we have germinated again there were um lastly because this is uh, also uh, one of the questions that has been in people's minds some are asking it uh, openly others are murmuring it all these things and the characters of Onyindu sibling to the extent of even uh, making people like uh, 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 our barrister Ejiofo to quit and also come does it mean that Mazenam, because we say ah, Onyindu have the right to appoint any lawyer yes it doesn't matter whatever happens but as a human being uh, he teaches us common sense and he has it that one i'm sure uh, is onion do not away in any way normally because uh, for suffered have suffered uh, you know defending mazin the kind of which you know so does it mean that Mazin Namdekano is not aware or he is not in there? Even if uh, the explanation doesn't really matter because he experienced it. Uh, to the extent all these things are happening, does it mean that uh, he's under Mazin Namdekano's accord or he is not aware? Because that one I cannot think about it or accept it, that he's not aware. So can you touch that side? Because this is what many people have been asking both overtly and covertly Marzi, please and now from there you uh, proceed to i think this will be the last question you proceed to okay uh, okay Marzi, okay Marzi, i i will answer you this thing in a very simple way yes Marzi, if, let me tell you in this case if mazen nam the cannot did not give consent and right and sign that this is the uh, the lawyer that will represent him there is nothing we can do about it like they say you can force a horse to the stream but you can't force him to drink water he knows do you understand me some reasons is best left for him to make the decision but we are in a position to advise him to tell him are you understanding me the position of things that is one thing we have to know we, our duty is to inform him to advise him that this way you are going is not the right besides it's just like we advise him don't go to africa don't go to places but he later went to africa what do you want us to do who is bearing the brunt we are the one bearing the brunt let me tell you people something if some of you who knew chike dozium people in europe who will know chike dozium I want everybody to compare Chike Dozem they know three years ago and Chike Dozem they know now, those who have seen him. Chike Dozem has become old because of stress. Look, become grown white as people know him before. In a just space of three years, he have because of the stress. It's a burden brought to us. If only you have listened to us, all we tell him don't go here don't go advice we won't be in this situation we'll be in the place to channel the struggle in another in another stage we are the one bearing the brunt not him he's in the gss custody quite all right it's understood many people have died on the process of trying to protect mazin and the many people have lost their lives people have lost their businesses people have lost a lot of things we are paying heavy price to make sure that Mazin Namdekan will understand what is happening. I don't know what else we have to do. We are paying the price. But we know we are fighting with a bigger force. Eh? We are fighting with a bigger force. They have to sabotage everything we are doing. 
that is one of the things that you have to understand, Mazu. He has right to say, we will do the one we can do. And there is nothing you can do about it. But the most important thing is, while we are having all these challenges, uh, we focus on the bigger picture, which is the restoration of Biafra. So let me tell you one thing. I tell you this has become an obligation and um, something we cannot, no matter anything. We have taken our, our, our message to countries. We have, we have engaged with countries. So tomorrow now, do you want us to go and tell the countries we are no more doing again? Is that not the most stupid thing ever we can do? And that is what they have been saying about consistency. Because we have built some solid relationship and people are seeing it. Nigerian government knows. So suddenly, they want us to back out so that we make caricature of the Biafra struggle in front of the international community. People approach us. Countries have read our story. They are interested in our story. But, uh, you know, this internationally, don't expect them to come out and start talking or like this. Because... So, all of a sudden, because of all these things, we quit. They say we talk about These guys, they are not consistent. We want to prove people wrong. That they are a young, evil, Biafran man. Who will stand to make sure that Biafra gets freedom. No enticement, no money. The deal is give us a referendum for the restoration of Biafra. That is the only single thing we have in our agenda. That is why they know that we are not easily, we cannot be, they know, the government know, the politicians know, we, this set of IPOB leadership, we cannot be easily cajoled. We cannot even be drawn close. We are very far from them. That's why the people they saw around them, they said that they use them to play because they cannot confront us. They know our mindset. And they tell them also, they know that we cannot compromise. But the only thing we will accept is give us a date for a referendum let us know if Biafran says they want to remain as Nigerians, then we know how we go from there. That is all. Mazi, to continue, I want to touch another topic, which is the criminality also in Anambara being carried out by the AVGs. AVG and the Fulani Hesmen, and also our message to the governors. This is the topic I want to touch. You know, as a criminality, I use also as a case study in Imo State. And I want to use what is happening, the criminality among the AVG in Anambra. You know, that is Anambra Vigilante, official Anambra Vigilante group. Yes, yes, official Anambra Vigilante. You know, this official Anambra vigilante was formed by this. He was the guy behind it, Eba Keba. And you know, this Eba Keba, he was under the regime of, um, uh, was the former governor, um, um, Obiano. He was his security aide. This guy committed a lot of atrocities, killed many IPOB members with all these people. And uh, he took over, become a homeland commissioner for Soludo. When he got the full license to organize men they are using for the same assassination plots. All this group they form is just they use them in preparation for elections. Because the governors, most of them don't work. They depend on people they form. They will use and intimidate people. You know, when you don't work, you don't expect to win next time. So they, the only thing they do is they make sure they bring in Fulani. Yes, men, give them a place. Because they will use them to terrorize the people. They will use them to terrorize. When they put a Fulani on one side, they create a vigil to be able to license all the criminals. 
you understanding me they will be able to license hand over guns to the criminals the murderers all the people they, they are thoughts they will use them and hand over Mazi, sometimes if you see what is happening in the headquarters of the AVG, you will share tears. There is an AVG station in Anambra. I don't want to mention the name, their place, but that place, I think something that happened there. This AVG, their job is to capture young girls. There was a young lady that was rescued from that place this girl was inside that place she's five months pregnant and all the AVG they were a young girl a young girl of 16 years they were using the girl they kept they impregnated that young girl inside the AVG office they go out catch our young girls imagine i start to ask when did our young men there are a lot of women out there there are a lot of young ladies out there where did they bring this idea of capturing their own sister kept them and the raping where did this idea of rape coming from our people these security people where is this idea coming from they call themselves a vision they see young people they say they have mad they kill them but if you go to their station all kind of juju is inside the AVG. All kind. They will bring Juju from Akwaibon, bring from Calabar, bring from everywhere. An AVG office is made up of full Juju. But when they see, they have marks in their body, but when they see a young woman who has one mark, maybe traditional mark in their village, they will kill. Presently, as I am talking to you, somebody tell, because you know, when it starts, when IPO be start now, or we give order to ESN, we say, for sure, these people, these are evil people. They will come at the ESN, I've come, IPAB has come. Now, the AVG in open, open. For you to know, they are the same criminals. Some of them have run from also, some of them are from Anambra who were working in also. As pressure is high, some of them have joined the AVG in Anambra. If you go to AVG Anambra, have a place they are pissing people's car and sell. In open. AVG Anambra. They now kidnap our own people also. It, for you to know, it is a recycle of criminals within the state. They now kidnap our own people, take money. If you are saying that this criminal, this unknown government, they are the same people with the uniform. The same people committing all this crime. I tell you, in Opo, the LVG in Anambra have their own depot. When they kidnap you, if you don't pay money, they take your car, they cut it and sell AVG, AVG. Mazze, you know why I'm saying this about AVG? You know, the, the, the Nigerian um, intelligence now, let me say the DSS and the police will be surprised this thing I'm going to talk. Mazze, most of this criminal you see, some of them are living in the houses of AVG commanders. Are you hearing me? Most of these criminals, they pursue from also from Yihiala. They are living, they are being accommodated by AVG commanders in Anambra. Let me give you one instance because I don't want to give too many this thing. You, you people hear about the guy they call um uh, what is his name in osumo um what is the name of this guy hmm. that is one of these criminal i will remember his name somebody please remember me the name of this criminal in osumo do you understand me um, um what is his name um Oh, I must remember this guy name. I used to call his name now on on air. No, 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 no. I used to call his name. He's a well notorious, a well notorious uh, uh, um, a criminal. I must remember this guy name. I have called his name on the air. They call him. He's a cousin to Double Lion that was killed last time. He's well known. They, um, um, he's also a criminal there. They call him. Uh, 
um, please if you are listening to me now please in uh in some of our distant please inbox me that name i must call his name thank you this this criminal as they were pursuing him he was taking refuge as all this thing is happening in our city, he took her. Sometimes when the problem happened in our city, he took her. In Osumo, he will run inside um, uh, that Osu Valley. When that place is hot, he will. Most of them are, you know, living with, um, you know, people. They are all, they are all living with uh, these people. Now there is one AGG commander. There is one. No, it's not gentle. People should know it's not gentle. Not gentle. This guy, there is one FVG commander in Ezenifite. His name is Big Fish. This Big Fish, as you are, call, they are calling their name. No, no, no. I'm, um, Ochiaga, Ochiaga, Ochiaga. Thank you, Ochiaga. His name is he's the number one criminal in Osum Osumo Ochiaga. Now he was being tracked to the house of Big Fish, who is the commander of AVG in Anambara. Are you are you are you people understanding what is happening? His name is Ochiaga. Now, when they track him, they went to the house of the big fish, AVG commander. They missed him. They missed Ochiaga. During interrogation, when they are trying to know, when he said that Ochiaga, he, he, he just left a few days ago, because that's how they, but they are, as problem is happening, they are in the house of AVG commanders in Anambara. Now, on the process, they took the big fish for interrogation. On the process, they realized that the big fish who is the AVG commander was the main person who carried out the kidnapping carried out the kidnapping of one of Soludo's head if everybody remember the Soludo head that they they carried with with his wife it was this AVG commander they called big fish that carried that operation out on the process of looking for Chiaga, a VG commander. Most of the kidnapping happening in Anambara are carried out by a VG members. The same criminals. They now run from Osu and join the AVG. And they stay under that umbrella. You can see the traces of the criminality also operating in Anambara. They are the one calling people also online in the main market everywhere is the same people. They have now recruited them on the process. Oh, you know, come out and join it. They are now most of them inside every and the government will not say they don't know. This is how they recycle criminals in and out, in and out, in and out of that territory today. The OPO, FPG, is the headquarter of criminal activities. They kidnap, they seize people's car, they cut people's cars, and they be able to hand sell. These are people Soludo handed over. Today, go to Okanot. I want to tell people, most, most of you used to forget something. In 2017, when the Fulani were, when Buhari was still in power, Fulani missionaries, his men, came into, we, we, we started on it on Radio Biafra. Many of you have forgotten. They came in through the River Rhine area and entered Okanot from Obaru, those axes. These Fulani missionaries, they massacred all the Hawasa Sarinki that was living in Okanot. You know, Aousa is Sariki. The Fulanis are any. They massacred. There was a report also that five of them were caught with AK-47. Most of you have forgotten. That was how the Fulani came in. 
and dominated Oka from 2017. Oka North. Achala, all this exists. The criminals came in. Who brought them in? Because they killed them, used them as missionaries. They killed our own people. Who brought them in? Some of our dirty politicians. Because some of our politicians are evil. All their money they make is just how to kill their own. They don't believe in making money without killing an evil man. Because they ask them, oh man, oh, let me know. how many people are you killing? Their target is kill the evil man. This fool and he came in from the river, from the river of Baru, uh, um, from uh, all those river area, and they came in because some of them, what people don't understand, most of them don't come by room because people will see them when they are coming. They follow all this bush road, they follow all these areas. Do you understand me? And they come in and come into the places. That is what they do. They massacred all the Sariki and all cannot. That is how Fulani took over those places. Now, importing foreign Fulanis, foreign Fulanis from Sahel region, all these places, they are bringing them in in a very big number. And they have virtually occupied many places in all cannot. Our mothers will go there to farm. They will allow them to farm after they have finished farming with their farm during the harvest. They block. They tell nobody comes here to harvest. This land belongs to the Fulani Hesmen. The governors, they know. They know. These are people who use the Fulanis and all these criminals to intimidate our own people. To make people to live under fear. And there are people who are being used to bring them in. They give them car, give them some money. They don't care what they do. Because they have taken money. <laughs> when he operates one, two years, you see him come out for local government chairman. They feel any support him. You see him going to be a special advisor. They will love it. He can be special advisor for the governor. And at the end of the day, you see people coming on social media ranting about IPOD, ESN. They start talking. Forgetting that we are doing all we can with the little resources we have to protect our place. Without IPOB and ESM, Fulani would have overrun our land. Most of you, you are in the market, you know, a red charger. A red charger and a, and a mobile cover. You don't know what is happening around your places. You don't know what is happening in the bushes. Every day you call us, Fulani, they kill somebody. But when we are shout, we have been shouting this from 2017, 18, till today, most of you don't care. It's only when they have killed somebody in your village. That time you remember, Fulani, take a follow by our places. Criminality is going on on a daily basis. Our people consider to use the blood of their own brothers to sacrifice because of small money they are giving to them. And the, most of the people control or cannot. It is from where Ebake Eba came from. That is where he recruited many criminals. They were cutting cars, doing everything. Today, if you go to Achala North and ask the people of Achala, they will tell you the tremendous work the ESN have done against the Fulani Hesmen. Today, you can see the no more cutting of cars in Achala. Because I you are gone. Because we expose them. Maybe the governor go back. Maybe the governor has seen the truth, what we are shouting. Maybe he has investigated and found out that these people are saying the truth. That criminality is being controlled and carried out by people surrounding the government people. From police to army, all of them are party. Heartless people. The criminality in Anambara is something else. The criminality in Anambara is something else. We thought that Soludo would come out and make a difference. We don't see anything. 
a professor we thought he will come make some difference in Anambra. Three years has gone. There is nothing done in Anambra. There is nothing. Next year now, before the year runs out, they say they start making noise everywhere. And the people are being killed on a daily basis. If Fulani don't kill us, they are LVG, we kill our people, they will intimidate our people, they will do them as they like, and they will be running around. They give it half of one and LVG. Like you see, it is supporting this guy say he's supporting Navy. Don't do something for your state. But make it with good intention. Not because you want to come for politics, you start organizing something. Because you are hoping to you want to be a governor, you want to impress the northerners, you start doing something, push it. And now my chagare, just because you want to go and serve the Fulanias. And you are ready to sell your own people. Just all the governors in Ebo land, when they come in, especially those ones they put like the Anambra, like him and Eluguna, the, the Makaban agreement he signed with the full animal to Allah people. That's why you see him making on other IPOD. He has been talking against IPOD. Like Abe product man, I can also. Because these people are foolish because he signed, Dan Gote helped him. And he signed and they returned his seat. That's why he took over our land. Handed over to Fulani, maltreating people, asking people don't know that uh, Mbala started taking property tax in Enugu, asking people the money to pay for their houses. Some people giving three hundred thousand to pay. In when he's bringing Fulani, but Fulani is into our land. This was what the Yoruba people were talking. Mbala started implementing it in Enugu. Because you remember when last Christmas our people were showing their mansions, some Yoruba people said that the government should start taxing our people their mansions. They do. Pete and Ba has started taxing this money for people in Enugu, ask people in Enugu, they are bringing them now yearly deal for their property. Some giving 200,000, some 1 million, some 500,000. These are the kind of people they bring into the state to come and lead our people. If anybody who knows Peter Ba, on ahead, those see who can capo, we will show him that IPOB controlled Biafra land. He will never hand any inch of Biafra land to the Fulanis for their settlement. It will never happen, not in this life, not in our next life. Or Jukwaya Biakai Ponaka. What has in the because he's challenging our breaking food and needs. Look at this pack of criminality that has come out in Enugu. Kidnapping road. People say, where is ESN? Will ESN make magic? ESN will make magic? Most of you, especially in Enugu, ESN came in. You sabotage ESN. You hand, most of them, you sabotage them. Some of them, they are in jail. Even if you, do you think anybody can say, okay, we go, we got it. Who is going? Who is going to defend your community? Maybe you are one voice or two voices. Two voices. Call it that your place is burning. But your community is not in support to come and defend them. Because the PG is working with the Fulani. Anything that, because he is their middle man. He is there to sabotage any move to protect the people. He want to make sure he gives them a place. He do not care. And some of them, he let her again join to remain there. These are the challenges we are having. And we are saying, you see FVG in Anambara, I'm giving, we are giving Soludo this information. Because we know sometimes they put these people because the election is coming. They call them AVG, but they hand over money, many of them with AK-47. This is how they are picking people, innocent people, young girls, 
If it, we don't know whether they are using our guests for ritual, because if you go to the AVG office, the kind of juju they will pack in the AVG place, you start asking yourself, which place is this? Did they come to use you for ritual? This is AVG office. And we are going to sort it out with them, Marcy. And I'm going to stop there pertaining because if we start talking about what is happening in Anambara with the AVG, we are not going to end this program. But I'm going again to tell our people concerning the agricultural sensitization IPOB has embarked on. And that is what I want everybody. Your parents may not be listening this evening. They will tell you one excuse or the other. Radio uh, Biafrana, hey, Rabbi, that's always the excuse. If people want to listen, they will listen. People who don't want to listen, they will not listen. They have excuses. But it's our duty. And I want to make this thing very clear. Biafrans should know that IPOB leadership is not asking you to give us land to do business with you. No, we are a government. We are an institution. We are encouraging you to talk to your family. Be part of it. Make sure you engage in this agricultural season. I will give a little bit information about all these things. Biafran should know one thing. There is something we want them to understand. That after the civil war, the government understood that they use hunger. It was one of their major, um, uh, um, uh, it's one of their major uh, tools they use in defeating the Afra land. Hunger. And if we keep silent again, it is going to repeat itself. All of us are aware that the governors in the northern Nigeria they came out boldly and said food should not be sent to the southeast. We don't give a shit what they say or what their plans are. Because we know where they are going. They are trying to threaten you with food again. Number two, people should understand that it is a policy after the civil war. It is, it is a, I mean, a secret document under the Nigerian government to make sure the eastern part of Nigeria never grow their own food. They will never be food sufficient. It is a policy. Sometimes people say, the governor, uh, this, I don't know many of you, I think you were playing it on this radio. You people saw one of our brothers who said he went for agricultural program, I think in Germany or where. He told you the northern governors, around nine of the northern states, were there. The Yorubas were there. Nobody from the southeast and south south were sent to that program over agricultural revolution, global agricultural program. People that would be assigned food to grow. No governor, he can't go, do you understand me? Talking rubbish and look forming security that we use to kill their own people. An agricultural something to fit. The world is shouting about food shortage. Food shortage. We are living in a rainforest environment. We cannot grow our own food. The little we are growing, they send the Fulani terrorists, Fulani army to come and destroy it. Are you people thinking? They told us that they are the food food basket of the nation. In the far north, they have land more than us. Even corn, the corn stems, when you harvest your corn, they are food for cows. Many things, after harvest, they can store those food for their cows. No. They are sending them to the Biafra land. They are inside our farms. They don't only destroy our crops. They rape our women. They kill our men. They take over our land. And the, some of our governors will talk. People come to talk. That's you know, I don't want to be on radio to insult anybody because there is no need. The insult supposed to be an action taken against you and not to insult you. 
but it is very painful that we have governors because they don't want to say IPOB have given a good idea instead of to support IPOB in many things we have brought in Biafra land no they don't want to oh, IP because of IPOB it must be clapped down so that people will say IPOB is doing something we tell our people IPOB leadership we are acquiring siblings what millions of naira to distribute and support our people during this agricultural season we are asking those philanthropists that every Easter, Christmas, you buy a bag of rice, buy oil, buy this thing. We are asking you, we don't say don't give people food. But we are asking you, have you think that during this farming season, you can also buy seedlings, cassava stems, corn, watermelon, tomatoes, okra. Give the seedlings to people in your villages. There are new methods of agriculture around your house. People are planting with bags of cement, back ordinary sack, robbers, and the people are showing. Say, look at I planted this pumpkin. This is just three weeks pumpkin. Water leaves, scent leaves. All these things are money. People in the village don't even see bitter leaf again. They go to somebody is living in the village that is going to the market to buy bitter leaf. Bitter leaf that you will cut and put the stick in your backyard. You can use it and make flour in your compound. Our people don't put it. Water leaf you don't plant. Only once you put it will grow and scatter the uh, um, seedlings all around and grow. Scent leaf the same thing. Everybody has turned to a beggar. Our parents and brothers in the villages are asking you to send them money to buy oil. Pump oil. They will ask you money to buy pepper. They tell you that we are dying of hunger in the village. Where they are living round that is full of green. A land that you throw a seed on their own they germinate. Our governors are not ready to implement such policies. They are only interested and on our since we are born and our own so and our own chapels on the Arocha. Every governor will come and our own so when will all this rubbish end? People are going to the moon, people are going to the sky, people have invented the, uh, the solar energy, people are inventing electric cars, people are inventing all kind of things. We are just uh, people are inventing speed trains. We every day and our own port junction and our own rata road and our own bossy. Every day we are in the same rubbish. Every administration that comes, non -airons. not maintenance, building a new road. We can't venture into any different projects. Agriculture is something the Nigerian government deliberately. They will bring you tomato from the north, onions from the north, a goosey from the north, onion, everything from the north, meat. Many of you do not know that all these cows they are bringing. Even yam. Many, all our people have yam ban all this while. No more yam ban. Nobody. Mazi. These people, cows, they are bringing to you. Don't you people know these cows are not coming from the north? These cows are being imported from Sudan, from Chad, from Niger, from Cameroon. Every cow, they are importing it. They are, you are booming the business of other countries, other neighboring countries where they have their full and brothers, the people that help them to defeat you. You must continue eating their meat. The meat, some of them have they are they, they are having sexual activities on and they bring it to you to come and eat in biafra land but they stop you to import ordinary stockfish many of you do not know that people in anambara knows what i'm talking oh, river river we have atlantic ocean near us we have rivers fishes from the river is the most tasteful fish but our people where are they buying fish they are going to medugri to lecture basin 
because no fish in our own waters because they have bridged all these fishes with their dams do you know how many dams in the northern part because the dams are bridged so that the fishes don't come the fishes accumulate in the northern part of nigeria the chart basin where our people go to buy pieces as well is it not from medjugri they are bringing it i was in medjugri i know you will see every you see the trailers of fish fish Stockfish, they don't want us to bring. They make stockfish an ace bit. They don't want you to import stockfish, but they are importing cows from their neighboring countries. Fulanese in Mali, in Burkina Faso, they travel and bring their cows to Nigeria to sell for our people. We have no goat. Our people cannot put up gold. If you ask them, they find one excuse. Hey, Indoshi, which Indoshi? Are you people not there? The young youth, this is farming season. Some of you are there. Not, some people are coming from the north to come and play the bushes for you. Young boys, 17 years, 18 years. People, as I am talking, people who know me, I grow as a young person both in my maternal place and my father's place they don't ever pay somebody for a level to clear the farm to make the mold and do the wedding anybody can ask even at a point it is not for financial gain i climbed palm trees by myself to go and cut palm trees in our own farms it doesn't stop me who i am today many youth are in the villages this is farming season they can take their bag buy farms cut clear the farms and they make money instead they are there begging their brothers abroad to bring money people are coming from the north to go list people people from other countries come in our own land as a farming season cut season make you are looking for money for business only this farming season if you go for clearing bushes go digging more ridges for farm you can raise capital for your business. You can raise 300,000. You can raise 500,000 and start doing so. Some of you are looking for somebody, you are begging for that money to give you 500,000 to start something. It is farming season. You don't want to do farming. You don't want to go and clear. He removes nothing from you. Most of us you see today, we did farming. We didn't do only for ourselves. We did, did for our uncles, did for family members. We organize ourselves and go for farming. It did not stop you from who you want to be. Young people, instead, your parents, parents have become bad example. Your son finished school, he has already have a laptop, OJHK, OJME Yahoo. What kind of society are you people breeding? You don't know what is happening around you. This is farming season. ESN is taking every risk necessary to be in the bush to protect our people, to make sure our people farm. We are living in a land of green. We cannot farm. You cannot go to anybody back here that you get small uncle. You cannot get pepper. You cannot get chicken. You don't have no chicken, no goat, nothing. What get you here in Auburn? Is this life? This is how they have turned us into. You prefer to go to Lagos. Ghana here. I was here where you can be in the village and make money from farming. Does this stop you from anything you want to be? I mean, farming season. You are from Abia State. You make your contact in Imo State or Anambra. You go and clear. Follow your fellow, your four or five people. Do your buy farms and declare. Make your money in your pocket. It doesn't stop you from anything. You make your money. The money belongs to you. You at the same time food. People are doing their job. Five thousand naira. Why can't our youth five thousand naira? You prefer to beg me for five thousand naira when you can go to job a young man and get five thousand naira for a day. If you work, if you work for ten days, you don't know how much you have. You don't know. Or you can buy farms, you people are two or three, buy farm 20,000 during this farm season. They are right. Or it's people from the north coming to do it for you. Everything you want to blame separate. 
time for famine you are in the church clapping hand thinking manna will fall from heaven That is why IPOB is embarking on this agricultural sensitization. We are not asking you to go and grow your own crop. Also, it is very, very important for food security in our place. If we can produce enough food in our place, the price of food will drop down. Any country that cannot produce what they eat, then why are they living? Any moment they close the border, you don't have anything. You have nothing to eat. You don't want to plant something at your backyard. In your compound, you don't want to do anything. You want to call. We have. They have turned every one of you to be a beggar. Just like the government. Look at Ukraine fighting. They are fighting. Nigeria is begging them for grain. Your brothers and sisters are suffering abroad. Some supporting you at home. You want to beg them money for okra. You want to beg them money for pepper. You want to beg them money to buy water leaves. You want to eat a deep kaiko. You want to beg your people money to support you for that. If you don't beg people in abroad, you beg people in Lagos. All of you have turned to professional beggars. The governors have nothing, no agenda for the people. They have nothing to encourage the people. He's very happy. They cannot engage in a serious sensitization to make people to become everything our people are doing is individualism. People succeed by their own. There is nothing you this is agriculture we are talking is what and this evening what we are saying for those we are asking all this you know sometimes that's why if I look at some of these evil celebrities these evil celebrities if I look at them I just shake my head they come here and make noise full of deception full of deception they come on social media they deceive you deceive you some of them on the social media they come out today i think the government nigeria said they will start charging them some of them have started talking the truth how much are we making from social media how much are we making this because they are not truthful to themselves they continue to deceive the youth some of them will show you jigad he buy this from social media now government want to start charging them they have started running they have said how much are we making who are you deceiving who are you deceiving they continue to deceive the youth. Continue to deceive the youth. Many of them come, they go and borrow money. Stupid mentality. Because you are going for an occasion in Ibo land. If you come to Lagos, you will be driving like a private person. If you come to Ibo land, you carry escorts. Disturbing the poor masses. You can't encourage them for anything. It's only to come and show off. You want to spray one million, you buy it, you buy it 1.2 million so that you can come and spray money. Which society will survive in this way? Which society? You come to the village, your village has no pipe bone water, they have nothing, no road. You carry people with Rolls Royce, you come in the village, you spray money, and you are pushing the youth out of the society as if it is bed of roses out there. They don't know you're a criminal. You're a Yahoo person. You are dealing on Mpurumini and drugs. You come and you deceive them. Destroying the society with the fake life. The pastors will give you honor. You go, at the end of the day, what you will end up, you just build a big mansion, take chief, and you start making noise. Everywhere. And these things got to stop. Last time we spoke on, I spoke on this place. I said, because we are watching with keen interest, all these stupid ones coming on social media in a more You come out on social media deceiving of our people. What we will do to you? Because we are taking record of all these stupid sets of people. You come later, you will tell us whether whether the, the Elon Musk 
and uh, even this dango thing, whether it was okay they are doing that they succeeded we come on social media to deceive our youth okay they okay they we are taking record of every one of you but upon our social media they are common sense you may grow with no kid and i protect deceitful people even pastors coming out to declare rubbish uh, 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 miracles we are watching every one of you days has gone when you people if you people know don't know what to do encourage people to go into famine the churches should encourage people their members to go into famine so that at the end of the famine during harvest they will bring something for the house of the lord that is the harvest you never ask people to plant but you want harvest you want the first salary of their distance while agriculture nobody is trying to feed hunger everywhere and you are living in a green land you are living in rainforest and every day we continue to suffer the people we expect to correct these abnormalities in our society they are busy you talking rubbish taking titles you go for their occasions they will spend all the time introducing themselves what kind of people are this you cannot be able to use this all this thing you are doing in social media and promote agriculture in our land there is hunger if a war comes against us it will be difficult to bring you food what they did against you think the flyer media are stopping you think this mission is stopping today russians have bring soldiers in niger they have bringing their soldiers in niger to show you the game is just starting i can afford this issue in my mind and all of you are there even some 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 making content rubbish content make content that educational for our people for our young ones the governors cannot open up and correct enact laws and policies within the state church leaders cannot do anything i have the power i have the cellular bread i have rubbish and that church in your job you can name it dear friends i know if i start talking about the stupidity of our people we are not going to live here today and what i am saying here is today most of you have heard what i said here the agricultural sensitization is something we want in your villages support the people even if if you know you cannot if you can support if you can tell ipod come and take these seedlings and distribute to the people we will do it we will handle the logistics hand us over seedlings maize granules hand it over to ipob tell ipob i want to give you one ton of seedlings i want you people to we will do it wholeheartedly support ipob to make sure that food is in our land it is in our region every day we are full of the men full of the men full of the men some of you are not seeing the danger these people are everywhere and with the little resources ESN is trying to contain them try it because these people are mean they are terrorists they have no mercy for our people how many of you is supporting ESN none of you how many how many of you are supporting ESN nobody but sometimes people come here get money here esn in an esn and now you are on the ipod at mariagi tomorrow now you say that ipod is insulting people but you know we are not asking you give us money you may find it difficult so that i uh, is doing what ipod nobody will insult you no problem if you are 
bold enough. There are ways. Contact IPOB leadership. Tell us, I'm giving you people these seedlings. Share it to our people. IPOB, let me tell you people something. In Biafra land, we have 240 something local government. I don't want to go deep to tell you, but we have the record of everything we are doing. If, if we can be able to empower in each local government 500 farmers, let's put it that way 500 farmers, not everybody, not everybody, even 500 is too much. In out of these 200 and something local government in Biafra land, if we can be able to provide 100 to 200, let me just be on a minimal 200 farmers, enough seedlings, I'm telling you during harvest most of you cannot believe what food will be causing in Biafra land all this corn you plant once in one year corns can be planted three times in a year in Biafra land you can plant corn three times in a year there will be continuous there will be vegetable well, I keep one at a restaurant and say, give me, madam, give me a jikaiko. You think a jikaiko is what? Is it, is, is it, it, uh, it is pumpkin leaves and the water leaf. How many of you have planted pumpkin leaves and water leaf this period? Madam, give me a fine soup. Madam, give me oha. Oha, you are cutting oha trees in your place. Oh, yeah, you know, that's pretty. Come on, come on, come Madam, any more phone number with Ogiri? Na keti pa ya iya akara ano no opopo ano? Onye ga kroge da tolugu. Who will plan the tolugu for you? People don't know that you can have a farm for tolugu. You can have a farm for water leaf. You can have a farm for pumpkin leaves. Did you plant anyone? Did you plant anyone? Did you plant These are very ancient trees you use in cooking food. It has its own benefit. Today, the church people try to stigmatize the Oha tree and Entropa that they are evil trees. People cut every oha in their compound, which is very, very wrong. Oha is no more. Going out of extinct. Many of you do not know more know what is in Tropa. Many Igbos don't know what is in Umbo. But on Nabanyana Mungwata, he don't know there is Rafia Pam. Umbo. Where is Umbo today? Because these are original organic trees in our place and i could i call again pastor call again something that oha in your father's compound it is oha is a tree you used to know seasons the times they dry off and fall off and new ones are matan these are trees that are being used by the ancient people to calculate seasons time and seasons they thought oh honey on a compound you could pick a hand plant another one Instead, you just zero, zero tree, wine, wine tree, champagne tree, they are with money. You are trying to alter the demography of our land. People are planting trees in a good way. Most of you are building houses. After building houses, you clear everywhere. Compound, no tree. You didn't plant any tree. Tomorrow, you said, I hit table and mother. When you have used ties and put everywhere, no tree, no tree to control the climate where you come from. You cut all the trees that holds the land. Organic game in only hand. Education, no. A cram, child Bible. Genesis, if I said also, living the council, oh no, go, go, Deuteronomy. In that here, it ain't in my head. You put to look, you put to Paul. Do you think those things are signs of wisdom? I will stop here because if I continue on this topic, it is not going to end. Um, but I, I am calling, in conclusion, this is my conclusion, concluding statement. I am this evening soliciting for our people to support ESF. 
the work is very very enormous especially during this farming season it is not a job everybody must if you want food to be available some of you are saying i am staying in the north because food is cheap in the north some of you say ah, no, i stay in ogun state no, they are not importing it because most of the farmers from india from zimbabwe for passenger brought them to to the west many indians are doing cassava farming do all kind of farming in in the zimbabwe farmers their own how many is in your place nobody we encourage we are not telling you you need track or no there is what they call everybody who went to secondary school know about horticulture or horticulture is people who be able to grow their own food with it there for their personal consumption let's start from there we are not asking you to go to industrial farming those who we go to inside industrial farming are those who have the money the companies who want to run a farming business but for you plan the one you can eat you don't need to buy everything and this evening I am calling our people. Most of you, you said you want to support ESN. You want to support the work of IPO. This is the time. Some of you talk about ESN, but we, but you, you don't know how to they, in your village to go to the farm where they are pursuing your people. You know what it takes, and because we control ESN to be disciplined, we don't encourage them to ask the villagers anything. Because we don't want to give room for any misbehavior, any misconduct. We don't want them to go there to ask the villagers to give us money. No, it is not the duty of the village. The leadership, the ESN command, make sure anywhere Fulani are disturbing our people. It is our duty to draft in men there to control the situation. Most of you see Fulani took over many villages. Keep the villages out. Take over their schools, their house, and live in their houses. In Biafra land. Because it has not happened. Go to Enugu, go to Anambra, go to Ebony State. They kick the people out and live in their own houses and communities and chase them away. So I'm asking you today. Have you been supporting ESN? Or you have not been supporting ESN? It is time for you to wake up to support this ESN. We are not forcing anybody, but everybody should know. I am I am saying this thing for these people, guys. I know most of them are deceptive. They come on social media, they throw it, make their bracatabra. They claim they have this, they have that, but they can't support people in their community. They can't support any community service. They can't support anything. They only know how to come on social media and make noise. Throw money. I will not ask the EFCC because they are corrupt. Because had it been they intensify on these people throwing money like down, like now they, they jail this one, um, Boboriski, for six months. Actually, they jail. They jail Babariski, but the, the Idris is the one suffering because it's the real person that is suffering. Had it been they will be sincere in what they are doing and start to arrest some of these stupid people, throwing the money in the midst of poor people, trying to push them into criminality. But I know they won't do it because uh, they, that they are part. That is how they spot people they want to obtain. When they see some of these people go and throw money after they know, okay, this one, we go for this one. That is one of the most important things. We can't ask our enemies to do anything for us. We can't ask our enemies to do anything for us. Also, finally, while you are cracking your brain and they talk to your people to support the ESN, we need it because and the, those who want to support with siblings we know when we tell the state government they will not oh okay they are mayor that's not ipod you know it's just like when we say let us bury our people let us bury the dead there are too many dead bodies in our place all in the mortuary 
during celebration time our people have study to burial period if it is during easter they will pack all the if you are coming for easter you, it is no more easter you are coming for burial everybody put their burial in easter in christmas time everybody put burial in why are people doing these things the time people are supposed to come for celebration you take only morning people don't come again we have asked our people bury the dead we know some people have now take up that advice that when people die they bury them very fast and fix a date to do the burial uh, ceremony it is fine they put the dead in the ground but instead of some of these governors to come out and say IPOB, this is a very good point. This is a very good initiative. We are the initiator of this, 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 this idea. We can help to extend this idea more deeper and make it to work. Because we have the strategy how we can make it work. Instead for them to support us, we say very immediately, one person said, no, you can bury after two months. We give you two months. Is it not countering? The, it, it's just trying to put it in another shape. Uh, we give you two months to bury. What does it mean? Or mean anything? No, indirectly. You want, so that people will say, oh, okay, this governor say after two months now, no problem. Happen to IPO. The IPO will say bury. But we are telling you, if you bury him that time and bury him after two months, it's the same thing. Bury the dead and they do the ceremony. Remove, let us remove dead bodies from the mortuary. They are too much in the Afrian land. Paganism is still in your spirit and in your life. Keeping the dead in the mortuaries, this is an act of paganism. You mix it with Christianity, but it is paganism. It's pagan worship because you want to adore the person people now queue in and abound in the name of the Rolls Royce people who have never entered Rolls Royce in their life they bring Rolls Royce to carry them when they die what rubbish are we creating in our society we talk about agriculture they don't want to look into it but I am going to also touch this is a very important issue what is happening in Uli you know, when we talk about Uli, it's a special case somehow because one of these guys they call AK, I have called his name on radio on many occasions. But I think we have come to a point that this, so what I'm saying here now is the last time I will talk about him. Because I say, Ebuwe Ishi Manti Anoye. Ebuwe Aka Anoye, Ebuwe Ishi, Ebuwe Manti. We have found out that this guy, the same thing happening in Imo State is what they want to replicate in Oli. This AK is being sponsored by some people within that Oli. So far, we have calculated people that guy have killed on the flanges of Ome Paranka and Mehinka. They continue to kill people, more than 30 people. And being sponsored by this guy they call AB, ABC or Jacob. The one they call AK and Daddy. They continue killing people because of these kingship tussles. Kingship tussles. Trying to only is in here the local government. When some people hear Uli is hot, Uli, it is these are the people causing ABC or Jacob. Using it is kingship tussle. Just kingship. Anybody that wants to contest for the kingship will be assassinated, will be killed. They don't now. He's working with politicians. Politicians are using him now. Do you understand me? Now they will tell. They will go to another community. They tell you if you don't want us to disturb you people, you pay us five million. You pay us ten million. If not, we come and you see what we are doing. This is the kind of rubbish, criminality. This AK and Daddy being covered by this ABC or Jacob and. Uh, what I'm saying is this thing. The governor should look into this kinship puzzle. Because I am a hey, he al. Because when all those kind of kinship, because when we come in, we go straight and hit the norm. Straight. We don't talk too much because we know what is happening. So Lodo must look into this rubbish of kinship puzzles. Because that is what they are using to kill people and they will say, 
after killing people, they will say it is IPOB, it is ESN. That's why I'm saying it here. We know the problem happening, and we are telling them, stop doing these things in the name of IPOB, committing crime, keeping communities in a in, in heavily high crisis in the name of all the IPOB. Oh, what about IPOB? It's not IPOB. What we are saying is that when we look, look, it has turned to something you are using, you don't want to IPOB we give instruction, we go there, call the hammer, call hammer is simple, boom, everybody I'm on a wire. That is very simple. I'm saying it here for everybody to hear us. People say sometimes, eh, IPOB we complain. Yes, we complain. We are not complaining, we are letting the world. I hope we have Do you understand me? You must continue to say, do you understand me? Explain to people all my ruachi as nana juwaju or because nana juwaju before you are there. So that people say, Hey, Barone, these people are causing nuisance in their front line. They make these things to make sure we are not organized, we are not focused. People are thinking we will not get Biafra, we will get Biafra. But what we need is to remove all these dirty people that are coming, they are being used. This trying to make the Afra struggle look like a child is something, trying to make the Afra child struggle look like a criminal entity, which is not. When they, because Nigerian government do not want your case to be presented as an agitation. They don't like that word. They don't like self-determination issue. They want when they are talking to the foreign people, they tell them, no, it is criminality. It does not have anything to do with agitation. These people are criminals. This is what they want the world to hear. But thanks to IPO, if you come in the media, we are top notch. You come in the debate in, 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 in forming creating awareness for the international community. We have done our job excellently well and we continue to do it. We are not giving up. But they they're supposed to know a media a media team sponsored with little or nothing competing with the Nigerian media that they invest millions of dollars. Minister of Information, Minister of this, Department of Foreign this, they have this, they have all the media houses, they have all their their IT, the people they buy off, all their standard, they have their media system, but can they ask themselves, why is it with all these departments they have, if we tell them but if we unveil the day Biafra will come, we will unveil the men behind the IPOB media warriors, and then we marvel that indeed these people you see, they were the people that battled Nigeria on the media front. They will be surprised. That's why they think that oh, because they are hearing your them, you are millionaire. We are not millionaires. We are just the normal people being used by Chukwukikadia to fight for the freedom of our people. And to that, I tell the friends, I will be coming back because as of forge for Fala, so that most of you can comprehend what I have delivered this evening. I'm going to come back again online. Some of you have questions to ask. Keep your questions. Digest what have happened this evening, so that when you ask questions, you will hit the nail on the head. I will be coming on air maybe in a couple of weeks or after the court sittings. And those of you who have questions can be able to ask me the questions. And those who need things, more things to be clarified, you can also throw in the questions. But I can tell you, in all these things we do, we want Biafra land safe. We want Biafra land. We want our people to understand the message we are fighting for. We do not want our people to be to be interrupted with issues that have nothing to benefit our people. We want our place to be developed. We want our people to return home. And that is why we need those that say that we are in the government. We are in the government, then do something like somebody in the government. Because we know you have the right to build the roads. But if you refuse, I'm telling you, we have no option. We know Biafra is coming and we will do those things. It's just like when OKZ was in power. He thought the world would never come to an end. He left office. Look at what his successor is doing in Abba. So what can he tell people why he could not build anything? 
what will be his reason wherever he is what will he be saying to himself what are the excuses he can be able to make no more because somebody is showing somebody who decided not to be carried away somebody who understood that he didn't fall on the people they said fight ipob fight ipob he knows ipob is not his problem he knows that he was appointed there to all the promises he made against uh, when he made during his election campaign that that is what he has to fulfill it is not you tell people you will build roads for them electricity you come in you say to our ipo the cable like him started immediately he enter he start declaring war on ipo my loyal hand are there for all the nonsense. Don't worry, you're in the hand. You will understand in a miracle. You will understand in a miracle. We are living you now in a house. You jump, they jump, jump one off. Where I feel you're not signing. The day we happen to remember you, the day we will remember you. It doesn't matter the difference between own and own. What I will stop here. Dear friends and all the lovers of freedom. Once again, my name is Mazi Chena Samoro. I serve the indigenous people of Biafra as a member of the Directorate of State. And I will continue to serve you people diligently until Biafra is restored. There were no more Chineke. There were, there were Mazi, there were Dodrege. Dear friends and lovers of freedom, you have had it all. We must continue pushing on because Biafra restoration remains our focus. Thank you for listening. From me, Mars Jonathan, from here, it is simply good evening. Sources plays a pivot.
about creating an entire ecosystem that supports agriculture, from cash crops to animal husbandry. It's about building agricultural cottage industries that process. Lamb was raised again because uh, we've talked about this in the past, um, that uh, when the global fund through the Federal Ministry of Health started sending people for the third survey of uh, health professionals and health inst private health institutions, they were going around collecting data of location and personnel in all private uh, hospitals in Nigeria. And uh, these data, they are actually collecting, that's totally unconstitutional. You cannot collect private data uh, for any purpose, uh, first, without seeking the consent of the organizations involved, personal consent of the people involved, and explaining to them what this data is for. One, uh, a foreign agent cannot collect data in Nigeria. Um, so the global fund uh, funded by Bill Gates has no locus to collect any data because health is national security. And the data is protected under the 1999 constitution. So they were not supposed to do that in the first place. Now, let's see the history of this data collection. They had approached the association. Then I was the chairman of the Association of Private and uh, Medical Practitioners of Nigeria, Imo State. And uh, we went to a national council, uh, national executive meeting in Aba, and they came there to ask us that they want to collect data from the global fund funded by Bill Gates. Just, just a minute, sir. Is it, um, the Bill Gates group that approach or they approach you through an intermediary? No, the Bill Gates group afford, for, it was funding a, an NGO okay. who came to make a presentation at the National Executive Council meeting okay. telling us they want the data to make yellow pages. Okay. Yellow pages. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, 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 for, for doctors. And what, what was this? Yellow pages for doctors so that they can have a directory where all the doctors are. Now they were asking for a number of things. They were asking for photographs. They were asking for fingerprints mm -hmm. with biometric data. Yeah. And uh, they were asking for location, how many staff, who are the staff, the telephone numbers, and all that. We patiently had them out. And after that, uh, hearing them out, we now it told them to excuse us, and they laughed. And when they left, we now started putting things together. First of all, it would be illegal under medical ethics to have such a directory because uh, called yellow pages uh, because that will be primarily advertising, which is not allowed ethically. Secondly, they were a foreign agent because they have no right. This is national security. Just like going to the police station, I want to know all the policemen here, mm -hmm. all the police stations, where their locations are, their phone numbers, mm -hmm. and all that. It, 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 the Nigerian, Nigerian police will, will just arrest you for doing that, mm -hmm. even asking them. So the same thing is uh, health. Health is under national security and is all protected. If you were to have the information of all the police locations, uh, you can wipe out the police so they will, they, will, they will not get protected. The same thing if you were to know all the locations mm -hmm. and the telephone numbers of the doctors and the health personnel, you can also wipe the whole uh, uh, health personnel. And what will happen? So we will, we will not have a health system. Now we have to now depend on a foreign health system. Uh, which we do not know the consequences. So when we noticed that this was happening, and coincidentally, we now got a message, a, an SOS message from Benway, that in Moko, 
a town in Benway mm-hmm. that uh, a, a pharmacist, a famous pharmacist was killed by the doctors. So now, that's what was alleged, and so now a group of mercenaries mm-hmm. of Boko Haram, they call them, we are now seeking all the doctors to kill them. Mm-hmm. And the doctors had gone into hiding. So we know that this happened. This happened in, that was in 2010, I think. And then we said, wait a minute. How come? They said, no, there was a professional field that the doctor said that the, 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 the pharmacist was uh, attending to and taking away their patients. And the, the pharmacist denied it. And all of a sudden, uh, they, 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 they killed the, they, they alleged that the doctors killed the pharmacist. And now the pharmacist and their, and the association hired some uh, mercenaries to go and kill the doctor. So we now understood that actually this was a setup mm. and a, a well conspired setup by the people who we are talking to us, the Bill Gates organization, mm. and they were using their mercenaries to attack doctors. So we really understood that uh, the people who we are talking to us were even before they got a formal uh, uh, cooperative MOU from us to participate in their program. They were already going to the fields and mm. collecting data because the doctors didn't know who in different localities didn't know exactly what okay. this was all about. And then we now realize the plan that this, they were building up a, 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 a yes, a, a GPS guided map, mapping, as mm-hmm. they call it, the mapping of all the hospitals and the health professionals, and using the GPS in their phones to be able to track all the doctors mm-hmm. and the medical personnel, they have their numbers. So this raised an alarm. And uh, we were able to alert people, and uh, all, all of a sudden, under the Buhari administration, things seem to have piped mm-hmm. down. Now, immediately after Buhari's administration came to an end, they came up again with the mm-hmm. so-called third phase of this survey. Mm-hmm. So this this whole new program mm-hmm. is what they are on now mm-hmm. to map and target and kill the doctors. This was exactly what they did for the farmers. The Bill Gates donated, in quote, 14 million cell phones, which they called the electronic wallets. The, the idea was that they were going to give 2 billion Naira loan mm. or grant, grant yeah. to farmers. What the plan, as far as the doctors are concerned, is that the doctors of Nigeria are the people who uh, should, according to their plan, um, collect the eggs of women, which will now be used for the cloning procedure we call somatic cell nuclear transfer. And this is what I want to explain. Mm-hmm. What this is all about. Okay. Now, what the West is looking at is that they envisage a new human industry. The new human industry will make it possible to replace organ parts of sick people mm-hmm. instead of uh, uh, continuously taking drugs for any medical condition. So, what that means is that. If you have a heart disease and you go to a doctor, the doctor will uh, could take a sample from that your diseased heart, send it to the biotech companies, which are actually most of them in this category are owned by Bill Gates. They will now clone exactly that heart of that person. And how would they do this? They will take that. They will take the cell the doctor sent them and remove the nuclear material, that's the nucleus that has all the genetic information. Now, they will get the egg of a woman, um, or eggs of women, because they have, they will need several eggs for this. They will remove the nucleus on that egg, and then transfer 
the nucleus from that bee lizard into that egg. Mm. So that's what we call somatic cell nuclear transfer. So when they transfer it, and then they keep it to uh, in a culture to grow into a heart, replicating the exact heart of that diseased person. But now that heart will be brand new without disease. They can now send that heart back to the doctor, and they will now uh, implant it into the patient. And of course, the person must have paid maybe two million or a million dollars or whatever the cost involved. But this process of doing this is a manual process. That means making this transfer into the egg of a woman. So the eggs of women could be taken uh, in in hundreds uh, just to do one procedure. So they will need about a hundred million eggs, which will come from 10 million women. So when they looked at the map of the world and mm-hmm. saw, where on earth can we get up to 10 million women to donate egg? Okay, so, so they, they, they find Africa as um, and Nigeria as a resource base for that purpose? Yes. When okay. they looked at Nigeria, it, well, it looked very much promising for them. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Nigeria has the population over 250 million people, uh, about that now? Yeah, yeah Prof, uh, you see, uh, uh, is, this thing is very... Why is, um, is this thing, I want to find out, is this an uh, effort by the get restricted to Nigeria, or are there other African countries or other parts of the world that are being affected by what they are doing? The planned genocide is restricted to Nigeria. Uh, but one has to understand why do they need to kill the doctors. They kill the farmers because they wanted to make sure they eliminate all the seed growers okay. in the country. So when they eliminate the seed growers, the natural seeds will never be available again. Okay. And how they did that was very simple. They, what they did was that they just gave 14 million cell phones mm. to all Nigerian farmers so they could track those people who were being paid for seeds. Okay. So when other farmers go to them, they go to buy seeds and then they know that this person was being paid for seeds. So he's the one selling the seeds. So they now use the GPS coordinates mm. on these so-called electronic wallets, which are just cell phones, mm. to target all of them and eliminate them. When you eliminate the seed, natural seed growers, there will be no other alternative to the GMO, genetically modified organisms, uh, uh, foods yeah. and seeds. So they brought these seeds as improved seeds. The, the, the other farmers, they drove them into IDP camps and came to these IDP camps under the different NGOs and international agencies and presented these GMO seeds. Mm. So the farmers will now leave, they will temporarily hold their military activities in those areas so the farmers will go and resettle. When they resettle, they start planting the GMO seeds. Once you plant the GMO seeds that first time, that first seed you get from that your maize. Yeah. If you eat it, that will be the last you are going to eat. Because if you take the seed from that GMO uh, corn yeah. and plant it, it will not grow. The gene that allows replication has been switched off. Right. So you have to go back to the, pro- the, the person who produced the initial seed. Yeah. That is, in this case in Nigeria, it will be Monsanto. So they will now use them to reproduce these seeds. Okay. So these seeds are what actually makes the um, the, the agricultural produce to, to move on. Okay. So they, they are using this um, technique yeah. to eliminate all the so natural seed growers. Okay. And then when they now, the remaining farmers don't have any other place to get seeds than to go, go to, to, them, to them. To, to go to them for that. Now, where do the doctors come in? The doctors come in in the fact that when they capture the food security, which they actually have done now, because they, you really, the, most of the seed growers have been, have been killed. Let, just to give you an example, between 2015 and 2018, 37,500 people, victims, were killed by Boko Haram. Okay. Uh, these, are, these were farmers. Mm-hmm. 
Then, of this 37,500, 32,000, that's 85% we are Muslims. 5,500 we are Christians. Mm -hmm. And in states like Zamfara, 60% of the victims we are Hausa. 40% we are Fulani. Fulani. So it became clear that this has nothing to do with Islamic terrorism. It has to do with elimination of all the seed growers. Okay. Now they have eliminated the seed growers. Okay. Now they have, they are moving into the second phase of their program. Now, when the farmers go to them, now we now depend exclusively on the GMOs. Okay. So, you mean we now depend on GMOs right now? Exactly. Okay. Because without the GMOs, you cannot really uh, get seeds. Unless we are getting seeds from different African countries and some places. Some places in the south, especially southwest, mm -hmm. and uh, some parts of southeast, we can still get our own seeds because yeah. the Boko Haram have not really infiltrated, infiltrated them. Mm -hmm. But they are trying to do that. So what is happening now is that they want to move into the next phase. The next phase is whereby they will have total monopoly of the seeds. And then they will tell the farmers, you want you want us to give you seed, okay? We can give you seed, but on the premise that you must tell your wife and daughters to go and donate their ovarian eggs. That's a conditional gift. No? Conditional gift. Food. That is, if you want food, you have to donate ovarian eggs, the right. eggs right. of women. And why do they have to do that? They have to do that because the Western countries mm -hmm. need these ovarian eggs mm -hmm. for cloning. Nigeria is the only country in the world and in the history of the world which has legalized collection of organs without consent. So your organ, which you own, which is your person, if you go to the hospital, they can collect that organ without your consent. Because the states in section, the National Health Act of 2014 and 2015, actually signed in 2015, states that you you can actually collect that organ without consent. In, in section 48 and, 50, and 51 of the National Health Act 2014 version of it, mm -hmm. actually states that you can collect that organ without consent. You can collect organ and you can collect the gametes, that is the, the eggs of women, without consent of the patient. That's very dangerous. That's very dangerous, but it was allowed into law. I personally led the, the doctor's delegation in the National Assembly hearing and the Senate hearing and pointed this out before Ike Peremado, uh, before, uh, uh, Governor, uh, the, uh, the, the main, the main, uh, um, proponent of the law, uh, who was Ifan Yokowa. Senator Ifan Yokowa then. Okay. And then, of course, uh, Ngige was also, Senator Ngige then was also present at that public hearing. I pointed this out that you cannot do this under any law. But they overruled the public hearing and Senator Ipermano, Ipermano, uh, uh, who was the person who was conducting the public hearing, uh, did not heed to all the calls by all the people present. And what happened? They passed the law with this defect. So all the people who are waiting to harvest organs, harvest eggs, are all in Nigeria. They are setting up their different NGOs. Can you explain why there is a multiplicity of NGOs in the Northeast? Where there is a conflict going on? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Doc, I will come back to this. But what I want to ask now, uh, I mean, why is the uh, get focused on Nigerian doctors? Yes. The, the, yeah. The, he, can you address yes, that? He focused on Nigerian doctors because he now wants to harvest these eggs. And doctors are the people going to harvest these eggs. Mm -hmm. These are going to be in hospitals. But mm -hmm. Nigerian doctors, he knows, because of our high moral standard, and I must say, very high moral standard, mm -hmm. our doctors will not do that. Because our doctors know that if you keep on harvesting those eggs in those women, mm -hmm. those women, two to three years later, they will die. Okay. They will die of liver failure, kidney failure, uh, in fact, some other complications. Yeah, other complications. So we know that that's going to happen. So we're not going to do that. And when he called us, mm -hmm. and I must say, I was physically present when Bill Gates called us through the, uh, uh, the, the General Electric, who he awarded the contract to build 260 hospitals in Nigeria. 
so that it will be at this hospital that will be harvesting these organs and harvesting these eggs. So he will now take us out of the health sector. She invited the leaders in the private health sector and said, okay, look, I'm ready to offer you money to leave the healthcare sector. We told him before, before the executives of GE that he is mad and insane to demand such a thing. To so leave medical practice. If you take the medical practice, and then we will give a, you will pay us. No matter the amount of dollars we ask for. So we said, you are mad. We are not going to do that and to hell with you. Is that really? We told him of, before the executives of, I was personally present. The lab people, the president and secretaries of the lab, national organization of the lab, the uh, laboratory scientists was there. The, the president and secretary of the pharmacy, community pharmacist was there. Mm. And we told him to his face, to his uh, uh, presence, because they were talking on, t- it was a telecom conference, and then the executives of uh, General Electric were there mm. at, the, uh, uh, um, at the headquarters in Abuja. Mm. So we told him up that you cannot do that even with all your money and all your thing is not going to be possible now since we rejected that offer yes. he has moved to his second option okay then. eliminate kill all these doctors and then take over the health care and he told us they have already taken up the the, the the whole government hospitals they bought the federal medical centers they bought the university teaching hospitals so what is remaining now is for us to get out of business so he can carry out okay. so he, these hospitals will become places where foreigners can get organs they will become places where he will harvest the, the ovarian eggs and it will become a killing house for ordinary Nigerians. This is why this is dangerous, and this is why this country must, not just to stop it, not just to ban GMOs, we must call for an international inquiry in which the case will be brought before the courts of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the International Criminal Court, International Court of Justice, we must bring it the same way Nuremberg trial was done during the Nazi Germany. Now, uh, uh, our security agencies are aware of uh, this thing that is playing out. Yes, okay. we, we, we have actually written to President uh, Bolamed, who is mean, the chief security officer of, of the country. Yeah. And, uh, of course, uh, all the other agencies, both police, army, and all the, uh, also have our submission uh, to the president. Um, so, and the National Assembly has been well informed, the senators, uh, and then the House members have been informed about this. Um, but it will, I, it will not be something that we handle by government alone. The Nigerian people must stand out. This Bill Gates wants to set up these killing houses in Nigeria, called his hospitals. We know that firsthand because there is no way he can invest all this money, he can carry out all this program only for Nigerians to get better health. No. This is a killing house. He, do you know that the Western countries did this for over 20 years in India and Southeast countries? They do something that they the do. same type of thing in a way that they use the lower caste people, the black people of India. Okay. And they use them to put out, to, to take organs, sell organs in all across uh, Southeast Asia. And this happened for 20 good years until a black Indian became the Minister of Health and stopped this activity a few years ago. Now we will not let that happen in this country. Uh, we must call for the arrest of Bill Gates. And all his cronies in this country, all of them, all the NGOs he's using, and uh, all the individuals that are helping him to carry out this program, the Nigerian people must take that responsibility. It's not a responsibility government alone can. Governments can't. The government can. The government of Nigeria cannot do this on their own. So it will mean the Nigerian people, the Nigerian youth, because these slaughterhouses will be the most, the first people to be targeted are the Nigerian youth. We must say no to Bill Gates totality. And he has a, 
he, 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 he is the one manipulating the whole public. You know, we, we immediately we talked about started talking about this. All of a sudden, the children in Kaduna were kidnapped. Yeah. Just to divert the attention of the people and say and then portray the government as in, uh, as incapable of uh, defending the Nigerian people. By the time we talked about this, all of a sudden now, oh no, there's some uh, obscure uh, imam uh, is now talking about the first lady. Okay. These are all diversionary tactics. It is the same Bill Gates. Nothing. He should he should be brought to justice in Nigeria. We are not going to wait for America. We are going to issue the indictments in Nigeria and call him to answer it. And if he does not answer it, anywhere we see him in the federal government, we will arrest him and bring him to justice. This nonsense must stop. Because somebody is a billionaire and so what? He is dictating vaccines. He is dictating uh, policies. He is appointing ministers. He is carrying out uh, 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 food policy in Nigeria. He is carrying out health policy in Nigeria. Who is this man? He yeah, must yeah, be yeah, arrested. Yeah, yeah Prof. Uh, um, you, 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 when you when you wrote the Senate and you copied a lot of international groups, the UN, ILO, the EU, um, Conference of Bishops, and so many other international organizations. Now, has there been any reaction coming from you? Yeah, uh, there, yeah, there have been different reactions. I did, but as you could see, the biggest uh, uh, charged all his uh, uh, parastatals, all the parastatals working for him, the NBMA, the, right. the National Biosafety Management Agency, they were all up in arms. The so-called uh, organizations that were set up as proxies for Monsanto, OFAB, and all that, they, they were all busy are uh, busy me at the national at the, at the uh, national assembly and writing all sorts of things. But you know the, these people are just actors uh, who who have been pushed out there by Bill Gates to speak for him. But what we want, the reaction we want, is Bill Gates to answer for himself to say yes, okay, look, this is not what I'm doing in Nigeria. Then let us now have the open debate. Let him come to the to the national assembly where he will answer to these charges. And we will go there and make the, let there be a Senate hearing. It happens all the time in America. It happens everywhere. This is a democracy. Mm -hmm. Let him come. This is not a matter for one obscure lawsuit or any other. Let him come before the people. Say, okay, I've come to Nigeria to help the Nigerian people. Okay, we're now asking, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Before, So everybody will now listen and then they will use their common sense to find figure out the truth. Okay, now... Now, uh, you've come for the arrest of Biget and for his trial. Yes. Now, beyond that, what do we need to do to contain this calamity? Now, the first thing we are going to do, yes. as a people, yes. we ban GMOs. Okay. Anywhere you see any GMO, don't eat it, don't breathe it, don't, if possible, get it destroyed. Any GMO that comes your way, they bring it to you for you to eat. You know that it's a GMO product. Throw it away. Because you're not eating any food. Right. Food nourishes. Toxins will only kill you. Sooner or later, you will be dead of cancer or any other thing. So why eat it? It's no food. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, you, you, get, you get involved and make sure that your food is not GMO. And Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. A great dear friends and lovers of freedom. This is Radio Biafra House Service coming to you through the auspices of Radio Biafra London. My name is Mens Mars, Jonathan Chinedu from Alo Province of Biafra London. We are here live and direct. Today is the 13th day of the fourth month, being April 2024. I welcome each and every one of you. So welcome your friends and well wishers onto this hallowed platform because today is going to be special. The title is The Brutal Exposure. Therefore, as you are coming, I know even in Asorok, they are quietly listening. The DSS, they are listening. Therefore, I want each and every one of you to come with your pen and papers. Bring your big, big, big and papers in order to write down the information that you are going to receive today and also today there is not going to be any opening lines please it is the brutal exposure 
as you may know, today we are here with our General Officer Commanding Maazichina Sawuru, who is going to be, you know,